thank you all from the bottom of our hearts for the tremendous support with the PTG show. If you are enjoying these episodes and want to help with the progress and development of this program and connect with like-minded, hungry paintball players, then head on over to ptgpodcast.com, click the orange Patreon link, and become a member of the PTG World Discord chat room. And now back to the show. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to lonewolfpaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands. And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. What's going on, PTG Nation? Thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining us. This episode has got to be one of the best of the year, if not the best of the year. Best in a long time. Just a truly amazing conversation with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Oliver Lang of Hormesis. One of the greatest minds that I've ever had the pleasure of being around and just being in his presence and having conversation with him uh, truly opens your eyes to what could be, what possibilities are out there. And his ideas for this one-on-one tour are getting more and more exciting. So without further ado, we're going to hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. Yes. Okay, hold on. Let's sound the trumpets. I got I got an actual war horn right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is time. We have the one and only Oliver Lang on Let's the go. show. The the Hormesis overlord, the one-on-one overlord doing his thing, having fun. It's in Bali right now. It's the morning time. Is that right, Ollie? Correct. Yeah, we're 9 a.m. Valentine's yes, Day. Happy Valentine, yeah. uh, my brother. So glad we get to <laughs> yeah. spend this this moment with you. Yeah, lots of love, lots of love today. Lots of love for you guys always and what you guys are doing and what you guys have been doing and, you know, our history together. There's just, uh, yeah, you know, you get older, the more you appreciate these types of things. You know, it was only uh, yesterday when Tyler was, uh, you know, at my knee playing paintball, you know, the height, the height of my knee. And now he's, you know, two stories taller than me with a kid who's about to start playing paintball. So, you know, it's uh, Let's go. it's a trippy adventure this whole thing's on, you know. Uh, really Marcelo, is. you know, it's like, I mean, it was just yesterday we were winning World Cup back to back with the Ironman, and you know, as before the day before that, we were playing paintball at velocity, and uh, now you're like a grown man, you know, at the height of your career, you know, crushing it. So it's just uh, it's a bizarre thing we're doing here, and it's pretty cool yeah. to all be doing it together, and uh, being able to track it, and being able to support each other, and being able to evolve and grow through it, and you know, I mean, um, I think what you guys have started with this play the game podcast is just awesome because I think you guys just really came in at this crucial time. And then I think that uh, you've inspired a lot of people to get uh, onto the airways and to do more of this type of stuff. And you see it more and more happening. So, you know, it's uh, it's beyond the sport, right? It's beyond the actual playing of it, of, of what of of really what it means to be good or a goat or great you know? And, um, so yeah, so you guys are doing awesome. I just made you guys some PTG, uh, headbands. So, uh, those are, those are headed to America right now. They're they're probably like soaring through the sky. They're, (laughs) they might be soaring through the sky right now. Wow. Did they get sent over on a dragon? Yeah. A a bright burning blue dragon is flying (laughs) over right now. Um, And, to, and it's just going to just swoop down and just drop them off at your house, Marcelo, and then Oof. swoop away. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Can't wait, man. Yeah. But then, it, but then you got to ship the other ones to Alex that we need. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Done. <clears throat> Yeah, I gotta yeah. say that was that was incredible to see uh, the logo on the Hormesis stuff. Hormesis has just it's so quickly become one of, if not the most iconic brand in the game. Um, so truly an honor. I think any any of the companies or players that see their name get put on some of the bands, it's like wow, that's uh, it's really cool. The community receives it really well. Everyone is really excited. Everyone in the PTG community saw those. I was like, oh my god, we can't wait. You know, like when are we? How can we get these? I was like, you know, that's that's not up to us. You know, we'll we'll have the Overlord on here soon. He'll let you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of the that was one of the things that was really important to me in the beginning, and that's why I think like the earlier lines are are very prized. But you know, a lot of those bands were like um, you know individuals that were part of the game for a long time, and that you know unfortunately just slipped away, and you don't know so much about them anymore. But I know about them because I saw them, you know, with my own eyes. I watched them play. I played against them. Some maybe some of you guys did as well, and and it was like my little way of being able to honor these guys you know in the simplest most you know subtle way of being able to be like looking at a band and saying oh this is this is a this is a mr you yeah okay this is this one's the mr you looking at this one saying oh this one's the rob strottinger yeah this is you know and then being able those are out in the world now and people are like you know they're, they're prized you know mm -hmm. some people don't even know who the who the guys are but um but all those some of those bands are named after you know pretty much guys who inspired me and, and inspired Alex and, you know, mm -hmm. it helped grow the sport in a, in a, in a juncture of time where the sport was needed, you need, needed to be grown, you know? Yeah. And you see, you see, you're seeing some of those guys come back around, you know, you see there was a, there was a poopy band, you know, there's a Todd Adamson band and now you're seeing Todd Adamson, you know, is, is headlining everything now with, with what mm -hmm. he's doing. And, you know, so it, it's kind of cool to see, uh, yeah, giving, giving new life to, you know, old things, so to say, man, one of my prized possessions that I have is my dreamy, you know, I have a, a dreamy one and that means the world to me to have one of those. Cause that's my brother for mm -hmm. all eternity. You know, the guy is just something that is an enigma that will live on in our minds and in the paintball space for all eternity because of what he did. Totally. And the, the, the way that he set a precedence in the game, his charisma, just the way that he carried himself, his outlook. He was like a young Walt Disney, essentially. So to have to have something like that, that is so coveted. I have like a, a custom dreamy pillow that he made me, you know, like those, those things that are just not out there in the world anywhere else. They're just these custom pieces. It's really special and they're timeless and they hold a, a special piece of our hearts too. That's, that's why people are drawn to them is because it's our memories are tied to these things, you know, and they mean so yeah. much to us as a community. Totally. And Marcus was so good at, uh, like he really was, uh, powerful at being able to make an impression on you. And like the stuff that he was saying is, you know, Tyler, it's, it's, it's very metaphysical, you know, to, you know, he was speaking about manifestation before mm -hmm. anybody was speaking That's about right. manifestation, you know, <laughs> and he like, put that into our minds, you know, because he was so almost annoying about it, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and it, it was, it was funny, but it was also like kind of very educational, you know, mm -hmm. now that I reflect on it, you know, and in a weird way, Marcus was a, uh, a, one of the best teachers I ever had, you know? Yeah. I was, I was just going to say, it's interesting, you know, a lot of really powerful leaders are, you know, at first they're looked at as kind of crazy. People don't understand the things they're saying. They can't receive them because they're just not aware of even that type of mantra or language or ideas. And that's kind of like that, you know, manifestation and the power to, to set intention. And, you know, that whole process is something that a lot of successful people talk about over and over now. But you're right. Back when he was saying it, it was like, what are you talking about? Manifest. <laughs> what do you mean? Just just like dream it up. You know, well, actually, yeah. Yeah. Dream it up, you know, dream it up and then do it. Mantis Fest, you know, Mantis Fest. <laughs> Let's go. I, I mean, he's really on to something there. And I think that if we all kind of tap into that, we can we can learn it because, yeah, we're all living. We're all living a dream, you know, and um, it's just like he says, you can't kill a dream. And, you know, every night I, I have wonderful dreams or crazy dreams or whatever they are. And I wake up in the morning and I try to unpack them a little bit and, and write them down and savor them. And, and I even have somebody I have a mentor who is dream. Um, uh, he can analyze dreams and I send him, I send him my dreams, you know, and then 
I tried to take those and put them into this reality, you know? And so again, kind of segueing into this, you know, this elite one-on-one -on -one is just another version of my, of my dream, which is my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, paintball is a crazy dream, you know, like I dreamed up a reality of my life that, uh, didn't exist, you know, to become the greatest paintball player, you know? And it's like, that wasn't something that was a reality before, you know? So the, mm. the beauty of craziness is to dream up <laughs> new realities, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I think going into the future, as we are, you know, approaching it here, it's now, you know, your children, Tyler, these, these got, these kids are the dreamers, you know, these kids are the ones that are going to be dreaming the new future, you know, they're going to be the ones that are creating the new reality. And that's, that's how we make realities through, through imagination, essentially dreaming, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> with that kind of talk, I think I think it's a, a good time to bring up congratulations on being nominated for Innovator of the Year, Oliver. I think it's yeah. tremendous what you've done with the one-on-one -on -one thing with Hormesis. Um, World Cup was phenomenal, just the whole experience you guys provided. Um, it was like the old days. You know, everybody was excited to be at the field. Everybody was excited to be, you know, at the booth, be around the brand, be around the players. Um, you guys have made the players feel part of the brand, which is a really powerful thing. And then the one-on-one -on -one thing is just this incredible extension of all of that and a really unique opportunity for players to go and showcase their skills and try something new. And, and the possibilities and the options and potential outcomes are really endless. So, you know, I do think that uh, you are a, a clear shoe in for that. Actually, you know, all PTG listeners, if you don't mind, head over and give our man Oliver Lang a vote because what the one-on-one... -on -one can mean for the sport really is is bigger than I think a lot of people understand. Um, and I'm excited to see how it continues to grow. I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about about plans and, and what the future looks like for, you know, the elite one on one tour and, and the joust. Um, but real quick, just for a little plug, it's MajorLeaguePB.com and you can click the awards voting. And they actually have all the categories on there. Uh, Play the Game was nominated again for Creator of the Year. If you guys think we did a good job this year, we would really appreciate the vote as well. Um, tons of great competition. And, and actually, to your point earlier, Oliver, there's a lot of really exciting things happening in paintball right now. A lot of really good media, a lot of really good companies, a lot of good innovators, videographers, photographers. I mean, it's it's tremendous. The sport seems like it's absolutely glowing right now. Um, and if we keep heading in this direction, I think we're you know finally going to reach that promised land that we've all been been dreaming of. You know? No, I think you're right. I think I think it's funny. I was thinking about this this morning. I do think we are about to move into the pinnacle of the sport. You know, I mm -hmm. think even just this in general, these type of summit awards. You know, like duh, like how come we haven't been doing this for forty years? You know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was looking at the Major League Paintball website uh, the other day, and it was so well organized and structured. And, you know, there's this new video with Maddie explaining the sport, and the video is so good. I'm like, wow, <laughs> like, you know, like, damn, you know. 100%. It's like, and you're right. We have all these new videographers that are capturing this. You know, we have social medias, uh, so, so many social media um, channels that are uh, advocating for the sport, you know, and great players you know, it's, it's all kind of starting to happen right now. And so it feels good because, you know, I've, I've been watching this thing through it's not its whole inception, but you know, for a long, for a long time. And, uh, and there's been talk about it having, you know, the moments of the heyday back in the day, but I don't even think we're there yet. I mean, I think we're, mm -hmm. I think we're going to breach into it. And, um, you know, just for your listeners, it's so important that you get, you get um, involved, you know, and, and even just being a listener isn't involved, uh, you know, even liking a post is being involved. Like one thing I notice about other sports that we don't do so much is, and okay, when I say this, I don't mean this like in such a bad way, but like, we're not all supportive of each other. You know, it's like, oh, well, he does this and he's on that team. And, you know, we really need to get on just the paintball train and support everything. Like when I see a paintball post, I like it. I, you know, if it's something I dislike or don't approve of, maybe I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> but for the most part, if I see something paintball uh, oriented, I like it. I like it. Like, how hard is it just to hit the like button? It's easy. Like it, you know, share it if you, if you like it a lot, you know, um, comment on it. It's like those are the things that make the thing go, you know. Uh, we need, like, we have so many people who play paintball, and it's like, 
why is it so hard to grow something in terms of numbers here? It's like, it should be, there should be 10,000 likes just on this video. You know, there's easily 10,000 people out there that play paintball on a regular basis that should watch this. There should be, you know, a hundred thousand people following this, you know, there's, we haven't, we have the numbers. So the point is we all need to do our part to grow it. Um, and then also, you know, a big part of this is, is realizing that we're all in this together and we need to support each other. And so how do we do that is we have to realize that we're all part of this paintball tribe. So we need to always like, we need to be able to like what they do in tribes, you know, they'll, they'll even do like scarring and markings or, you know, um, different types of haircuts or, or they wear something. We need to always be wearing paintball uh, uniforms. And what I mean by that is it's not necessarily jerseys, but it's like, we need to always be relatable. You know, when you see somebody, if I was a skater and I see somebody wearing a skate shirt, I'm like, okay, that guy's on my team, you know? Right. Or if I'm into whatever it is and I see somebody wearing it, I'm like that guy's on my team. So it's like, we need to always be unified as a, as a huge network, which is the paintball network, you know, and we need to be wearing these things so that we can figure out who we are so we can say, okay, that guy's on my team. Let's, let's unite, you know, let's bond. Like I was listening to uh, one of my, somebody I know was talking to me, talking to me about being on a zoom call and somebody on the zoom call was wearing a paintball shirt and he was like, okay, that guy's my friend. Right. <laughs> so it's like, we have to go into this reality and we have to promote this thing, which is paintball. Right. So it's Without easy to yeah. wear, wear something paintball related as much as you possibly can. If you're a brand, if you're flow, if you're uh, play the game podcast, if, if you're hormesis, we need to wear, this is a uniform so that you can recognize who I am, right? So that we can be connected so that we can be friends so that we can grow this thing, you know? So it's, it's bigger than just wearing a brand and saying, Hey, this is cool. I'm wearing this brand. It's like, no, you're with me and I'm with you and we're going together on this thing. You know, you're repping and for the gang. That's right. We're repping for the game. <laughs> Gotta rep for the game. <laughs> That's right. And we need more brands to make more outside streetwear stuff so that it's just, you know, there's more brands yeah. doing it, right? I love 100%. that so much, Oliver. That, yeah. that could not be said any better. And you're right. It's team paintball. This is team us. We we have one sport, one collective, you know? So we gotta we have to really keep that in mind. I know it's cutthroat, there's business, there's this, that, and the other, but the big scale on, on the broad spectrum, you know, the big picture, this is team us all together. And we have to make sure we move together and, and perpetuate this thing in the right direction. Otherwise it could get skewed and then we could end up possibly setting ourselves back even, you know? So being together as a collective, and that's what I love about Major League Paintball. Uh, the NXL as a whole, I feel like the league is just strong right now. I feel like uh, having the branding of Major League Paintball is super strong for this current iteration that we're about to step into. So I know that that's been on the, the mind of a lot of people, and you can see that that's, that's where we're headed, you know? I've got a genius idea. <clears throat> Oliver, you guys got to make these. You need to make necklaces like this with giant numbers on them because <laughs> everywhere you go people are going to ask you what sport you play <laughs> i've i've learned yeah, that yeah, everywhere i go every time i fly people are like oh what do you play and i'm like oh well actually it's it's paintball and they're like what and then we get into the whole conversation about professional paintball the sport Boom. i mean it is oh. like it is like non-stop it is a guarantee that when when you wear a big actually, number well i love out. that alley -oop. hold on i love that alley -oop, Mar uh, marcelo but I think you should make it and you should make all those numbers and you should sell those on your website and you should make all that money. Why oh. didn't I think of that? <laughs> you know, Genius. you should make every number. Yeah. We're doing it. I mean, I'm I can, I can make it for you here. I can make it for you here and you can sell it there. Just so everybody's aware, HK Army does sell numbers at this moment. Like they're they're on the website. Hey, there we right go. Now. They're yeah. a little small. They need there to be bigger. Go. They need to be bigger. Yeah. But they're so, dope. See, they my, are dope. My, they my, are dope. But Marcelo I, I, has, he, he's got, he's <laughs> tracked the field. He knows exactly what size they need to get the attention. <laughs> he's a genius. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. hundred percent. I'll Dude. go get the, the exact metrics, but uh, it, it's, I mean, it's undoubtable. So For let's sure. all do it. Let's all yeah. do it. Yeah. Hey, the, I think the essence of this conversation is that we all need to represent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, For sure. Like, when, and I think, and I think we went back a few episodes on this and I love being on the show. I think we do it like once a year so far. 
And it's like, it's like, I was even listening to some yesterday to kind of, you know, refresh myself. So I didn't uh, speak the same thing again, but it was like, I, you know, it was PayPal fashion was what we were talking about a, a couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, like, you know, we need to create what, what we're trying to represent into this reality as being paintball players, you know, and I don't want, I, this is, this is how I see it, you know, and I'm making it. How do you see it and make it, you know? Mm-hmm. And now you've seen a ton of headband companies pop up since, since us, which I love because I love more people getting into the creative aspect and the production and, you know, the business aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's good for everybody. Everybody's getting more involved. And again, like the last episode, I said, this is a call to action for you to get involved. And again, this is a call to action for you to get involved, even if it's just liking a post or even sharing a post, you know, get mm-hmm. involved. We need you. That's the biggest thing, you know, get active, you know, and yeah, if you're yeah. jealous and envious of other people, realize that that's just what's blocking you from being as great as you can be, you know, clear that out of the way and realize that you can do be doing the same exact thing. You know, um, one thing I learned kind of relatively quickly from this actually in Bali was I had all these friends who I was like, yeah, I'm making clothes. And they're like, Oh, you're making clothes, you know? And and I'm like, yeah, like I could sense they were jealous, you know? And I'm like, (laughs) dude, you know, uh, Okay, yeah, you know, come and take a free shirt. I'll make you something, you know. And then one of my friends came in and he was making clothes too. And he was like a little jealous that I had a shop. And he's like, you know what, dude, I'm so proud of you. You know, I'm and he un he he opened out, opened up his heart and said, you know, pretty much I was I was jealous and I'm proud of you. And I'm, you know, I'm not jealous anymore. And I'm I'm, you know, I'm so honored to be a part of here and to wear some of your stuff. And in his other business, it it popped off. Like his <laughs> other business just went crazy, you know, because all that sort of like, oh, oh, he's doing it and I, I can't, you know, oh, F him and I don't like, oh, you know. Honestly, dude, we have to just keep boosting each other, right, Tyler? Remember That's that back in the day? Boost, baby. You know, it's it's the boost, you know, and let's just keep boosting each other because the more we boost them, it's a more positive algorithm. You That's know? right. It's also learning how to how to use those emotions and point them in the right direction. You know, you if you can recognize that you're, you're feeling a little bit of jealousy and you can compartmentalize like, okay, why am I feeling that way? It can motivate you to go and do better things or be more creative or be more productive or, you know, actually take the first step into starting your business. You know, if you can use those things as motivation yeah. rather than resentment, oh my goodness, you skyrocket. You just absolutely skyrocket. And you should be thankful for those people that are doing better than you because they are a source of motivation. They can be a source of motivation. But if you, if you... Totally. You know, if you have these negative feelings and resentment, then there will be a source of your downfall. There will be a source of failure. You know, it's your choice how those emotions affect you. You know, you just have to be the observer and recognize them and decide what you want to do with them. Well, I think a lot of people in this modern day, unfortunately, uh, choose to harbor those those that 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 neg- those negative uh, attributes, and they think it's cool. You know, like I remember there was a Absolutely. guy at one at one of the tours and he's like, I'm the villain and I'm the bad guy. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. I was like, but, you know, that's that's that's, you know, if that inspires you, that's great, too. But, you know, the villains, the bad guys, they never win. You know, like the good guys win and you can be a good guy, too. You know, and all, all you have to do is shift yourself and and respect your opponent and train hard and you can beat him. It's instead of being like, oh, you know, he's so handsome and so much better lo- and so much faster and so. And, oh, I'm just this. And oh, it's like, no, actually, if I just work a little bit and, and put some effort into this and have a good attitude, I actually can do good and win. And, you know, and that's just a stepping stone into it, you know. And honestly, Tyler, you you know, you've got you've have one of the most positive attitudes out there. And uh, and it's like, I don't understand why people haven't picked that up on how big of a code that is in life, you know, and how beneficial that is for your team and for people around you. You know, it's like people want to be around positive, fun, Mm. happy people, you know, Mm -hmm. and those positive, fun, happy people look at Dynasty, you know, they win tournaments, you know, there's a there's a there's an abundance of it in one space and they're all moving together, you know, and and it it, it creates results, you know, also heat, you know, there's there's that's this is the. Yeah, the secret. You know, <laughs> the secret. <laughs> yeah, and he did the quotation marks because mm-hmm. the secret is right in front of your eyes. Really, that's the that's the most amazing thing is it's right on the other side of your 
your fears and all your worries and all these things that hold you back if you just press through and, and have faith in yourself, in yourself, number one. That's your number one all-star player is you. Have faith For in sure. your all-star player because that's you. You know, And For if sure. you can do that, you can press through anything. And, and it is contagious to have that kind of energy around and it creates more of it. It creates more. So then you have more of it flowing and, and it really starts to go. Yeah. Abundance. Have you ever seen a tree fruit? <laughs> it's insane, dude. It's like too much, you know? It is. It's a lot. It's a, it's it's a lot a of fruit, lot. you know? Like one apple tree is just banging, you know? <laughs> Shout out to the Central Valley. I grew up in the uh, agricultural capital of our country. Yeah, and uh, man, it, it's just so cool to see all of us still having so much fun with the sport too. That's what really inspires me is there's still so much love in this game from so many different avenues and so many different people and other people are getting bit by this love bug this love paintball bug and they're on the journey and it seems to be getting a lot bigger now of course it's not as big as it was in the early 2000s i think it was damn near a billion dollar industry at that time right about if if not a billion dollar industry i think we're you know on more than halfway there you know chipping away at getting back to the to the way it was but it takes all of us like we've been talking about it takes all of us working together and then you know who knows maybe we get a netflix show or something cool that happens in like the the big scheme of social media and how all this stuff works and then it just catches and before you know it you're watching little young pro paintball players like cooper the young uh phenom who's going to be coming up into the future and and all shout these out to young cooper phenoms that are in the game there's so many young paintball players which is the coolest thing to see because that's how we all started so to totally. for, for us to see that is like that's mission accomplished that means we're doing something right where moms are signing up they're like okay i want my youngster to play paintball if we can keep families enjoying paintball fathers mothers everyone enjoying paintball then we're moving in the right direction okay so this is my segue into some of this elite one-on-one -on -one tour stuff okay yes because not everybody, but a lot of parents will take their kids to play paintball and their kids will love it and their kids will, you know, be attracted to it because it's, it's, you know, it, it brings out all this, all these different factors, you know, mm -hmm. it's emotional, it's primal, it's physical, it's spiritual. And, um, you know, the parent goes, okay, you know, it's this, this much money every month to play. Okay. You know, play. Um, but you know, there's no future in it. You know, so, so some parents are thinking like this, you know, not all of them, you know, some yeah. parents are thinking like this right now. It's very hard to have a future in paintball. Let's just be honest, like a very to have mm -hmm. to, you know, to do what you guys have done to do what I've done. You know, it's, uh, you know, let's just say there's 40 people who have done that, maybe 50 people who have done that in, in so far in the in the whole history of paintball, you know, um, and some people have a good shot at it, get kind of close and, you know, end up somewhat dwindling out. The point I'm trying to make here is I do believe, and this is what I'm really trying to do with this whole elite one-on-one -on -one thing, is I'm trying to get you paid. I'm trying to get your children paid playing paintball. Now, with the NXL and everything that's going on, it's epic, dude. Like, it's, it's at a height of heights. Still, when you win... You don't win that much in terms of uh, as an individual. You win nice bundle that you can say it's this much for the World Cup. But then at the end of the day, I only got a little slice of it. And, you know, I was able to pay my rent a little bit. Right. The point is, is you guys, some of you guys are on salaries playing pro, which is cool, um, you know, and, and, and that's a valuable aspect of it. But like I want to start making events where it's large cash prizes for first place. Like where you cannot say no to showing up, you know? Well, it's funny right? that you say this because this is, this is starting to catch wind. There's, there's, there's a buzz about this concept that you're talking about right now. Yeah. It's like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what your guy's salary is on the team, but like, let's just say there was a pro event and it was $50,000. And again, I'm speaking about this in the beginning as this could evolve, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like, how can you not show up to play paintball for $50,000 for one weekend, right? And to win it as one individual, you know, you just can't say no to that, you know? And in the future, it could be a hundred grand or 200 grand or 250 grand. Like that's not far uh, out, you know? 
it could even be more. I don't know. You know, it's it's that's the beauty of this and the move that as it starts to advance and the more it gets picked up, the more interest it gets. Um, it's a very viable thing, you know, like what we did this last year with the tour was, I think, probably one of the coolest things personally I've ever done in the sport. It was badass, and I, dude. <laughs> and and I think it was probably one of the coolest things that I think paintball has seen in a long time in terms of, you know, something new to the to the to the sphere of the game. You know, we we got into a bus, you know, we traveled across the USA, you know, we hit all of the be- biggest paintball fields, their destinations uh, or the destination locations to play paintball. And we set up a field. We invited the you know, the best talent of the, of the, of the surrounding area. And we said, okay, play, you know, here you go. Here's the format play, you know, the best guy gets invited to come play this final grand finale event and he can win $10,000. And you're just a kind of a nobody kid from, you know, Boston or from, you know, Florida or wherever you're from. And all of a sudden now you're somebody and now now you're competing for $10,000 cash for yourself. You know, not that's more than I've ever won in any tournament myself. That's what I'm saying. I've never won ten thousand dollars for for first place uh, uh, cash for myself. Right. You know, right. So so that's a big for me. Also, that's a big honor. You know, Um, I used to want I used to want to be the guy. And I think I said this last podcast. I I used to want to be the guy who makes the most money playing paintball. Now I want to be the guy who pays the most money to the guys playing paintball, you know, right. That's the next evolution of it, you know? So like that, I really do believe that this format, as it becomes uh, more uh, assimilable, more presentable, people understand it. And again, we can go over those details in a minute, but I do believe that there's going to be great value in this because players, uh, kids, you know, like a Cooper, these types of kids, their parents can say, well, there is a future. This guy can go play this one-on-one event and he can make $50,000 an event or a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Or if he takes third mm-hmm. place, he can make $5,000 or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is. That's, there's something there for an Absolutely. individual, yeah. you know? And, and I'm saying that's, what's going to keep people invested in the sport. And they're going to say, okay, son, we're going to go out and train every weekend on this one-on-one field at our local field. And we're going to, we're, we're going to become the best in this area. And then you're going to get, get invited to the, to the invitational event and you're going to go win that event and you're going to win, you know, X amount of dollars or X amount of prizes or whatever it is. Right. So Ollie, I think that's I a, just, a big factor. Ask it would, it would start by growing locally. It has to be locally grown all across the world essentially, or whatever the pockets are that are going to be the big pockets for this type of style. And then yeah. from those pockets, you would, you would have events in those pockets where they would, um, I mean, I can't imagine it would be free, right? You have to, where does, how do you generate the revenue in order to give away a hundred, 200 okay. grand in order to so, ha- have a tournament like that? So let me, let me show you, let me, let me break down a little bit about, so we kind of spoke about last year's tour. If you haven't, if you don't know about last year's tour, I'd go look at the Go Sports grand finale or go check out you the got to. productions. You have it's, to, because there's, the there's a lot of, there's a lot of the content. Video, yeah. The video content is too good. Do not miss out yeah. on that. Go watch that. <laughs> so this year, what we're doing, well, and last year it cost us a lot of money, you know, and it was a big mm-hmm. promotional thing and it was a lot of fun, but it didn't add up so much um, financially, you know, and it was, a, it was an extremely, um, uh, extreme amount of time. You know, it was eight mm-hmm. weeks uh, on the road pretty much, you know, which is, is two months, right? So this year, what I'm doing is we're doing the world tour, the search for the best. I think I gave you a poster if you want to put that up, right? Yeah. Uh, Great art by Clint Riddle. I mean, this stuff is like amazing stuff. Shout out to Clint. These types of posters are going to be, you know, iconic in the future. We're going to, we're, we're printing some, you know, even from last year, we made all the heroes ones, like collect them all. They're, they're going to be iconic. Yeah. And um, do a hand painted one, like a one-off. For sure. I like that. I like that. (laughs) I like that. The art in it. So this year we're going world. We're searching for the best in the world. Yeah. Last year we searched for the best in the States. Yeah. uh, Shout out to Tommy Greenleaf, you know, came out, crushed it. Shout out to all of the the heroes who came through. Um, They were amazing. Tommy had no elbow pads out there just stunting. 
No there he pad. is right there. That's, there that's go, no Tommy. Tommy right there. Yeah. And he has because, no pads on in the picture. Check it out. But see, again, this YouTube. is what's cool about this is what's cool about this sport is that, or at least this format is, is you can adapt, right? Yeah. Like, so what he did is he played the joust. He wore these elbow pads and he got bounced on them a few times, right? Mm -hmm. Or he got hit on it a few times. So he realized that he wanted to get really tight. And he was yeah. like, you know, I don't even want to have pads there. And the way that I see it is I'm like, I'm all for, especially in the beginning of something like, let's, let's try it. You know, like some people were like, oh, he should have to wear a long sleeve. It's like, well, you know, no. okay. Uh, that's your opinion right now. We're trying things. And honestly, I like it because it's kind of gangster, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah for sure. <laughs> you know? It's a new, it's a new look, you know, and you don't have to dive in this uh, like regular paintball. And I mean, I couldn't play paintball without elbow pads prior because, you know, you're always on your elbow. This is, mm -hmm. you're, you're not like this. So it's, it's quite nice. Um, but so we're searching for the best in the world this year. So we're going to, uh, first stop is Asia. We're going to Thailand. We're going to be going on the 23rd, 24th, uh, Thailand. I think you have that poster if you want to put it up yes, there sir. also. Oh, working on oh, it. Yeah. yeah. Damn, and, um, and we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're being hosted, uh, at a great venue, uh, one of my friends who's, who's really done a lot for the sport, uh, Mr. Lin, he's he's doing awesome here work. You know, paintball in Asia is pretty hurting, so to say. It's it's not as big as it used to be after the, all these Malaysian cups. So really what we're doing is we're having the event in Thailand. We're inviting people from all over uh, Asia. So we've got people from uh, Singapore coming. We've got people from Malaysia coming. We've got Thai. We've got, um, I think, somebody from India is coming uh australia representing australia and um i don't know maybe taiwan or, or japan something like that so we've got a pretty diverse nice crew that are coming to the thailand event and representing their country right so this is a another aspect to this that i think is a really powerful thing is like if we want to get into the olympics one day it's very hard to train to have a full five five man thai team that could compete against dynasty or heat. Right. But I think in a very short amount of time with proper training and a, and a proper um, deployment of these fields at fields, like even at this tie field, uh, which is just what's going to happen on, on the world tour, because what we're doing is each field that's participating in this has to purchase a kit. And these kits are going to be then solidified at each location to be able to be used on their own uh, at their own dispose to generate money and as well as cr to create new players. Right. Mm -hmm. So like wow. the, t this, this field will have this field that's going to be um, in Thailand, the, the sap paintball field, a speed paintball, they're going to have a field now. So they're going to be able to train on a regular basis. Uh, this, this format. Right. And again, the beauty of this format is that it's very small. It's very simple. You don't, you don't need much. All you need is one other guy. You need a little bit of paint. Um, if you use the Hormesis Elite app, it tracks it all. You get statistics for it. And, um, and then all of a sudden, in a short amount of time, I bet you there's going to be a very elite caliber one-on-one -on -one player coming out of Thailand. You know, mm -hmm. And not going to say that he's going to be able to compete with you guys right away, but it, I would say in, in a year or two years, he's going to be quite – you know, versatile and he could maybe compete in a, in a, in a semi-pro version of this. Right. And maybe in a couple of years, he could compete in a pro level of it. And, it, and then beyond that, if we wanted to go worldwide uh, and do a, a, you know, a real Olympic style training for this, which is a goal of mine in the future is you could have a, a, a Thai one -on, elite one-on-one -on -one player representing Thailand in the Olympics for paintball mm. relatively, relatively soon as well as anywhere else that, that, uh, that, um, that embodies it, you know, and takes it yeah. on. Right. So, so that's really, it. that's really my, that's really my mission with this, uh, with this tour this year. So we're going Thailand. That's the first one. And, um, you know, some people are, it's, it takes a while. I'm realizing it takes a while for people to catch on to things and, and that's natural. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say that the beauty of this is that it's quite simple. And I think if you, if you are just, uh, if you see it, you know, like Marcella, you were, you were able to see it at the grand finale a little bit. Um, you see how, how reasonable it is, you know, it's not, it's not too complex, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the way that the reason why I like that is because 
you know, like I want to go play paintball sometimes. Right. But it's very difficult even for me to go play paintball because I need a, I need a team, you know, I would need somebody that I could communicate with that, you know, can, you know, it's like after you play on dynasty for a long time, it's hard to just to go jump on some, <laughs> some, you know, a hodgepodge team and play, you know, you could do that maybe a little bit, but it, you don't really, you know, it's, it's, you don't feel safe, <laughs> you know, when I'm playing with Marcelo or you Tyler, I'm like, okay, we're safe. You know, <laughs> when I'm playing with a bunch of guys that I don't know who their names are, or how, what level they're at, or, you know, or the field's deflated and it's all wonky and the turf's all shaggy. It's like, uh, you know, and I'm just not going to play today, you know, but if, if every paintball field um, that I deploy this on for the, for the world tour was able to pick one of these up, it's like, I would know, okay, I could go to speed paintball and I could play one-on-ones and yeah, maybe I'm better than the other guy, but I can experiment and I can try other things. And I know that there's a small court that's designated for me to go play and I could go play for one hour, two hours, you know, and then I could be done and have the rest of my day, you know, to go and, and play, uh, other, do other things, you know, or spend time with my, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. friends or my family or whatever it is. Right. So, you know, right now we also see paintball as a very uh, Saturday, Sunday or oriented sport, you know. Uh, my, my goal in the future with this is to be able to make it, you know, Monday through Sunday, uh, mm -hmm. and you go play, you know, like here, there's a big paddle ball, uh, uh, what's it called? Paddle, pickleball. Uh, well, pickleball in the U S but paddle in Europe, okay. then, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. uh, anyway, so, so they're, they're building these all here in, in Ubud and I'm looking at them and I'm going, wow, this is super cool concept. Like these guys are, they're booking by the hour mm -hmm. and they're, they're playing paddle ball for one hour against some friends and then they're out of there. Right. And they're, they've got four courts. Right. So what I want to do is I want to build one of these, uh, I want to build something some somewhere where it's got an elite 101 field, elite 101 field, elite 101 field, elite 101 field. And it's like, you book it by the hour, you know, and you come play, you know, from 10 AM to 10 PM. Right. And you book in for the hour and maybe, you know, you've got Marcelo there, you know, as a pro coach, you know, and people pay him and you go through the uh, logistics of, you know, the drills and how to start, blah, 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 you know, and then people, I, I see that this is being something that could really, uh, you know, change the way that the sport's being played, you know, instead of it just being played Saturday, Sunday, you know, this yeah. could actually be even done in places where it's, um, you know, more heavily populated because it's, it's, it could be condensed. It's cleaner, you know, it's got the glass around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this is just a, a side tangent vision, and but anyways. It does look amazing. I, I see what you're saying there, and it's much easier to set these kinds of things up. I think that also one of the coolest things is the storylines of how you can have a player who, like you said, is a is a quote-unquote no-name player, you know? Doesn't, doesn't have any notoriety in paintball in that regard. Trains his butt off at something like this, steps out there and is able to, to whoop up a top-name guy. You know, and then yeah. you're like, whoa, yeah, yeah. you know, there's there's something yeah. there. There's some skill set there. And then you can hone it. I think one of the most fun things about five man paintball uh, is building that camaraderie and that trust. And like you said, that is like the mission of team paintball is that's number one. You got to build camaraderie and you got to build trust. Otherwise, the team, when you go five against five, is going to probably flop in this. It's yeah. you. It's you. Yeah. And you can sharpen yourself to be the nastiest paintball player in the world at this, at this craft, at this style. Totally. And I, I love that. Totally. And it reminds me a lot of like, like we were talking about skateboarding or snowboarding or, or, you know, BMX, uh, all these have different facets of the game and they all hold weight within the sport. Like if you tell someone you're the best vert skater in the world, that holds merit. It doesn't matter your team, team skateboarding or team, whatever the sport is, you know, in that world, it's like, wow, best at the, at, in the world at that craft. And we can't be afraid to have multiple crafts of paintball and look at it from different angles, because I think it's only going to help us as we grow into the future. And, and I totally. can't wait to see like some youngster just come out of the woodwork and, and whoop one of us up, one of us, you know, the top players in the world that, that are really good at this game. And then you're like, wow, you got to take notice to a player like that, you know? Totally. Totally. And I think that's a good point because like I came from a skateboarding background and, and um, like even when I skated, uh, Tony Hawk was out, like he was not cool. Like, <laughs> like 
Tony, Tony Hawk, you know. <laughs> and uh, and then that? Tony Hawk, you no, know, he came back and and he he started doing the vert, and then vert became very popular, and then he got into the X Games, and he did the nine hundred, and everybody like lost Wait. their mind, yeah. and skateboarding blew up, and then skate, then that trick, then everybody's like, oh, but look, there's street skating, and there's oh, there's oh, there's oh, there's this type of skating, in mm-hmm. the skateboard industry boomed, you know, mm-hmm. so it's 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 hand in hand you know whether you're Absolutely. a bird skater or you're a street skater the the point i'm trying to make is i want to make another avenue for independence to have a a, a a pathway to succeed to grow to evolve to uh, in the sport and then also to be you know compensated and like a guy like tommy greenleaf you know i don't know how he is in the the five man scheme of things i know he plays on a, a on a pretty good team malicious uh, I don't know how, you know, I don't know exactly where he stands on that team, but I would think that he's probably one of their top players, you know, and I would, you know, I, I maybe I'll ask him. But the point I'm trying to make is you can be an elite one on one player like Tyler, you'd be an elite one on one player, but you're still excellent at the team aspect of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like just another it's another side of the coin. Right. Yeah. It's another thing to have under your belt. It's another thing to practice. It's, you know, and then maybe one day you got tired of the team thing and you can't travel as much. And, you know, you're having another kid. I don't know, whatever it is. And you're like, I'm just going to focus on this one on one thing because all I need to do is show up myself and drill. And then there's an event that's coming up and I can win 50 grand. Right. Then you're like, I could just, you know, this is this is my this is my avenue. This brings me back to how do we ge- how does it generate the revenue to to have a hundred thousand or or a crazy purse like that and and okay. I would imagine it's kind of like tennis or something where you're gonna try to pay out you know a little totally. a little deeper because golf tennis they kind of do that in those sports. So again, this is a multi-phase rollout. You know, mm. this last year was the first inception of it. People got a taste of it. People. Didn't know what it was, you know, and I, I thank everybody who trusted in me and who showed up for it and who played in it because the jousts were amazing. Like the joust is an amazing aspect of it that we haven't even really got into. The The dual aspect of it was amazing. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we hit all these locations and this was the first kind of seeding of it all. Right. This next year. Now I'm doing this across the world. So we're going Thailand. I'm actually going to do three three locations in the U.S. Uh, still unknown. I'm talking about one in Florida, one in Texas, one in California. But those fields haven't committed yet, so I'm still looking. So if you're interested and you want to partake in something like this, uh, I'm Arizona. available for discussion. Well, we did Arizona last year. Arizona was was actually a great turnout. It was just hot, so we had to do it at night, yeah. which was kind of fun. Was you know, cooking. it was it was it, it was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then. <laughs> And we're doing Canada. We've almost got that location uh, locked in. We're doing South America. We're still Damn. in discussions whether it's going to be uh, Mexico or maybe somewhere else, maybe Ecuador. I don't know. We'll, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll have that. We'll have to iron that out. And then um, we're doing UK is locked in and we're doing Germany is locked in. Right. So so we're doing a world tour and we're, we're going to we're going to plant these fields at all these fields. Right. We're going to teach the field owners how to run and operate these formats like that's my main thing and we're coming out on our own dime the only thing is the fields have to invest in a field and a kit so to say which is a field 16 bunkers which is some tents which is some scrim netting it's it's not that big of an investment right in fact they make back their investment that weekend of their uh hosting their event they take all proceeds for it so it's actually very uh, generative for for them to to have us come, yeah, and uh, and so I show up, I I build the field, I show them how to build the field, I teach them how to run the joust, I teach them how to organize players, I teach them how much they can charge per player per joust, okay, and then we do the same thing for the duel, right? Now each field, if fields pick this up, it's uh, not only is it a great event to have on a you know monthly basis, a weekly basis, yeah. a bi you know bi monthly basis. It's a great thing to add to the whole, uh, to your whole offering, right? Um, and and it creates a new avenue for players to play on a regular basis. We've also created an app. Um, Marcelo hooked us up. It's called the Hormesis Elite, right there. Okay, Marcelo hooked us up with Gallimore Software, and you can go on there and you can download that for free. You can put your name in there, put your picture in there, get, and you can start getting statistics done right now 
on when you play, right? So to answer your question, Tyler, once we've seeded this around the world and once everybody's picked it up and everybody's interested in it, because anybody who's played it is now interested in it. The people who haven't played it, they're not as interested in it because of oh, one-on-one's boring and, oh, I like five man or I like 10 man. And that's cool. The difference is, is that once you've done it and you've experienced it, it's a whole new, it's a whole new, it's a cool new experience, right? It's just like if you've never played tournament paintball and, uh, and you go play, uh, sorry, if you play uh, big games and then you go play tournament, paintball, it's a new experience, right? Mm-hmm. So and let me, let me beauty, be the first to say, you need to be playing one versus one paintball. If you're trying to be a great paintball player, you need to be doing one versus ones because they teach sure. you so much about gunfight tactic and movement and and this different style of play and it's no different than you should also be practicing 3v3s and and obviously off the break 5v5s and play some 10 man too go in the woods go play go play some 10 man as well you know there's you should be playing as much paintball as possible as many different styles as possible because it's going to round you out and and make you a better paintball player without a doubt that's right it's that's the holistic approach if you're trying to if you're trying to really advance yourself in this sport you know i definitely agree with that and and i think that the beauty of one-on-one and the reason why i've always loved one-on-one is because it's so easily done you know it's like i can go out with one of you with one loader set the parameter and we could play and we can get into those game real game time situations where i'm in a snap with you and i get shot and I can do it over and over and over again instead of having to go play five man and break out and then get get shot and then okay come off and I got to wait another twenty minutes to get another round in right mm-hmm. so it's it's a high speed um, it's a it's a very accelerated version of playing paintball right like if you, you saw it Marcelo at the grand finale right it's like you know Bushby played he had um, you know at least I don't know I can't remember the score but. He had, you know, so many breakouts and so many experiences, you know, hand-to-hand combat moments where either he won or he lost in 20 minutes. You know, like what was experienced in that 20 minutes would probably be maybe a weekend of paintball at, you know. Well, we well we played a full tournament the two days prior to that, and it was about a similar amount of paintball. <laughs> it was about a similar right. amount of paintball. You know, I'm like, damn. Yeah. You know, yeah. kid was in shape yeah. and, and looked great, but it's, it's a lot of paintball and you're right. Like you get to get right to it, engage in the gunfight. It does. It teaches you so much about rhythm and timing and even movement, even on that small field. And it was funny if you watch, you know, like when you, Ryan, Yosh, Alex, Archie went and played some of those videos are up on the, on the YouTube channel. If you watch those and see how much movement there is versus uh, the tour that you did last year, you see that the high level players still find ways to make a lot of moves on that, on that small field, because you see, and you understand when a player is switching. I actually, I do a drill when I host these, these, uh, team practices where it's one-on-one, you're about a bunker apart. You can gunfight from either side, right? It's a team oriented drill. So we'll have like, you know, four on four, uh, but it's one-on-one at a time and you get one point if you shoot someone and you get three points if you bunker them. And it's first to 11, but you can't win unless you have at least one three pointer. And the Mm -hmm. whole point of it, at first I explain it and they're like, you're crazy. You just want to see us get shot. I'm like, no, I'm teaching you how to recognize when that player switches. And when you have time to get to their blind zone and then take them down, you know, and it's a very valuable skill. And then you watch them go, they go back and forth and they're just kind of blowing each other up. But then after a while, they kind of get it. And they're like, whoa, there's something here. And that's relatable to five on five paintball because you know, when you put somebody in, you want to make a move. You need to know if you've actually put them in or if they're just waiting for you to stop shooting and they're going to come out and shoot you on the move, you know, or if they're going to roll off and shoot the gap, you know, and, and it absolutely teaches you that. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I, I, I like, uh, I like how you've created more drills. I'd like to see all your, all your new drills since the last, you know, yeah. 10 years of evolution, but, <laughs> Dude, but I, never, I think we one... never stop cooking. We've got drills on drills. On drills. Straight up. <laughs> I think one thing that's the one of the best things about the elite one on one for anybody, you know, especially any uh, like these kids you're talking about that you're doing clinics with is you put them in a forced environment where the time and their structure and there's, you know, there's 20 seconds between points. It's like the real pros are prepared and they're centered like guys who lost Mm -hmm. in the in the duel were the guys who got flustered and who didn't, you know, didn't conserve their energy and who didn't know how to maintain their, you know, the, the timings and were, you know, not prepared. 
like these are the guys who who blundered, you know. And the real good guys, like if you watch uh, Ryan and, and Archie in their in their um in their in their duel, you know, Ryan's like in the in the box almost, you know, ten seconds between each, you know, before each point, and like that's impressive, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see like a guy like uh, Yosh, who was who was uh, Archie's pit crew. You know, he's like how he helps Archie conserve the energy by being prepared for him where he needs to be for when the guy comes. Right. So these are all these little things, these nuances that, you know, people just don't get because you have to play tournaments to get them. And to play tournaments costs a lot of money and it t there's a lot involved and there's a lot of pressure. I mean, I, I remember my first tournaments, you know, they were they were expensive and they were a lot of it was a lot of pressure, you know, and we we blundered a lot of them, you know, we, we didn't win many of them because they were, you know, we were new to it. And then once we got a hold of it, you know, dynasty still winning from it. So the point is, is you got to get into that, um, that tournament mind frame and how do you get into that? This is a great way because with the app, you can time, it's got all the time. It's got everything. It's got all the pointing and everything that needs to be done. And you can literally be on the weekend having many tournaments for yourself and learning time management learning okay hey this is a good time for a timeout okay you know it's like uh, how many guys you need in your pit you know there's so many little factors that people don't ever get to see until the tournament but the tournaments where you know it's it's most <laughs> that's where you deal. need it <laughs> so ollie you gotta <laughs> give the listeners some hacks on how to be effective in the 1v1 events that you hold like what are some some key bits of information that would help them when they do choose to, you know, step onto the field yeah. and, and they're going to need some help out there. Good, good question. First of all, you, you will need to have some type of it. it this is not for the faint hearted. You're going to need to be, you're going to need to be fit to play the duel. I'm not going to lie. You know, like this isn't soft. This isn't it'll a get soft you in, version it'll of get it. you in shape. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, you're going to need to be pretty fit. I recommend uh, if you're going to be a dueler, you're going to need to have at least minimum two guys in your pit. Minimum. I think three is pretty good. Um, if you want to have like, you know, some other guys in there to, to you know, to be shouting and, you know, you know being gangster in there, then that's cool. You know, I, I think I think we allow five people total for the for the pit, but you need minimum two. You need a coach. You need somebody who's going to run paint, uh, run pods and, and, and fill your paint. Right. And the coach should just be there with you. Um, you need to definitely learn the the clock management time management and again this will convert into the to the other paintball versions but like you need to get um assimilated with 20 seconds between points and that sounds like it's not a, a not a not a lot it isn't a lot but it, it's enough you know and just like there's two minutes between the other uh games and other the other the other versions it's a good testament. It's a good way to like kind of get more being being prepared, you know. And you guys know when you're in the pit and after you come out uh, like of a bad point, you literally waste so much energy talking about that last point and then not preparing for the next point. All of a sudden you're like, oh, we're in there. You know, we got to get in there. So the point is, is time management, energy management are super crucial things for for the duel. OK, to definitely have a coach is essential you know definitely have a, a another pit guy who can fill pods and pick up pods is essential okay now the next thing is you want to learn the start box because the start box is tricky yeah like the way that it's set up it's 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 way different than the normal version so how do you Again, start off the break do you have to have both feet in and barrel touching yeah, so there's Oliver, like a, Oliver, there's, you mind if I real quick, you mind if I pull up that uh how to play presentation? Would that be a yeah, good time? Yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, I mean, this isn't perfect yet. I'm still working on this, but you can see so this is what the field's gonna look like this year. So yeah, this is a good slide. So if you see that there's this little white box around the start station, mm -hmm. so you have to be in there. You have to have both of your feet in there and you have to have your gun touching. Okay. Now the cool thing is you can move at any moment. Uh, you know, like, you know, you could be moving within the one second of the thing, right? As long as you're in there and your gun's touching. So there's so much versatility that can be done in this. Like, this is what's really cool to me is there's a whole, there, you could probably write a whole book on the start station. 
Hmm. Yeah. Because you can, you can go very heads up. You can try to out, you can try to outwit them, shoot cross body. It's very tricky, you know, and again, that could be something that could be written in the future, but, um, you have to learn the start box, you know, um, this year, this, these are the kits, the, the things that we're selling in, in, in terms of, um, the bunkers. And I believe that these are just the best bunkers to be played. You know, they're just, they're gonna, it's going to create a lot of action. You know, there's no more big, mm -hmm. big bunkers that are going to obscure your vision. This is very clean and clear. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, there's the basics, which are, you, know, you can take from, from any clinic is snap shooting, you know? snap shooting, uh, kind of the drill that you were just talking about, moving and shooting, Marcelo. And I feel like with the app and with a field like this at any field and uh, one sparring partner, you can play so much paintball that you're going you're gonna to create new versions of this format that I don't even know about yet. Mm. And that's what I think is really cool about this. It's like Dynasty, Heat, uh, you know, Impact, X-Factor, they're always winning, right? And they've got the – you know, they've got the, the, they've got the codes, right? They've got the cheat codes, so to say, right? And they know how to do it. This is a brand new opportunity for so many people to discover there. You know, there's so much possibility of new YouTube channels being explored about how to play this. You know, there's YouTube channels that needs to be like how to set one of these up. You know, there's, there's so much, this is what I think is really cool for the sport is it's something new that, it's a clean slate. It's a blank slate right now. You know, like I could write a book on this, but so could you, if you started to play it, you know, and you would have another view, another representation of it, you know? And it's like, if we were going to write, write the book on, um, on how to play standard paintball currently, you know, yes, it's very, it's much, it would be much more intricate and it would be much more nuanced and there'd be so many, you know, micro topics to go into, um, you know, and it would, that would probably be a beneficial thing to do, but you could get a lot and then, you know, that, that book would probably be that thick, you know, of how to play professional paintball. Now, you know, this, this book would probably be this thick, you know? And so the point is, is it's a, it's a, it's a blank canvas right now, you know? And I think that that's nice. also what's very exciting about it. You know, again, the possibility of coaching, you know, like, uh, you were a coach for it, Marcelo, you know, like there's a whole new possibility for coaching you know that is different way different than the other version you know way different and i think yeah. is very is very cool you know and the you saw how it is the coach stands in the in kind of this open box and he's got to have his goggles he's kind of a part of the game he can get shot you know and, uh, <laughs> and you know he's he's literally inches away from the field you know yeah. but he can't speak during the match but he can speak as soon as you know uh, as soon as the match is done to his opponent and it's like, it's so nuanced, you know, like it was super cool to watch uh, Tommy Greenleaf because Tommy Greenleaf showed up with one of his boys, one guy. This is why I say you need at least two showed up with one guy. And I was like, uh, Tommy, you're like, you're understaffed, bro. You know, like, I'm let's just give you, you LaSoya, you know? Chris LaSoya. You ever heard of him? No, that, <laughs> that was, that was, that was Billy Trucker Billy's oh, uh, Billy. insertion. Yeah. He, Billy was like, uh, cause he lost to Todd and then, uh, and then he went, you know, we went through the next four or three team, uh, three guys, three matches, sorry. And then Joker Billy went up to him and was like, hey, man, you know, like, you're pretty understaffed. Like, you want me to get you a, a pro guy? And he was like, sure. And he got him LaSoya. <laughs> and if you watch the video, it's classic, dude. It's classic <laughs> LaSoya. It's so classic LaSoya. He's the LaSoya, best, first man. of all, he didn't <laughs> coach him at all. He didn't say like, Hey, you know, if you want the thing, it's hilarious. He's like, he's like, kid, your snapshot's so good. Don't change anything, you know, like, but that's all he needed. He just yeah, needed that yeah, little bit yeah. of that, of that, uh, that little bit of yeah. uh, reassurance that, Hey, I'm good. You know? Yeah, exactly. It was classic, you know? And then, and then LaSoya spoke a little bit of, you know, typical LaSoya downwind to Travis Newsom you know, one time because Travis Newsom was doing this thing where he was, you know, coming out and being like, Oh, he's hit, he's hit, he's hit, he's hit, he's hit, he's hit. And he yeah. did that like, you know, point after point after point. And the thing is, is everybody got tired of it because he wasn't hit. Right. Yeah. But then one time he did get hit. Right. But then 
everybody was like, well, you've been saying he's hit, he's hit, he's hit the whole time. So now we're not listening to it's you because it's it, that's you know, a classic. Yeah. It's the boy, it's the boy who cried wolf, right? <laughs> and the soy is like, shut up, you know, like something like that. So it's pretty classic, you know. <laughs> Anyways, the soy definitely soy. helped him win that that you know that purse. And mm -hmm. without the soy, he wouldn't have. So you can see how big of the coaching factor there is there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, also, what I like about this is that I think we spoke about this a little bit last time, but you know, the for you guys to go, you know, for for Sarge to fund Heat, you know, for Dynasty to to get the sponsorship that they get and just to, to fund everybody to go to these events. It's expensive, man. You know, it's very pricey, you know, airfares, hotels, rental cars, food, entrance, paint, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a big one. Right. So the cool thing with this is like in the future, Tyler, you know, you say your kid, you want to play paintball with your kid, right? Absolutely. So in the, in the future, you want to play paintball with your kid. You're going out there, you're training with your kid. Yeah. Now, let's say there's an elite one on one tournament coming up and you, you enter in your kid and he, he he's doing pretty good. Right. And then it's like, OK, now he's he's one in the local area and you're like, OK, I, I believe in this. Um, OK, so there's the invitationals coming up in March. OK, let's send Theo to the invitational. Well, what do you have to do, man? All you have to do is pay for his airfare. OK, so his airfare from Arizona to California, 300 bucks. Right. Uh, a rental car couple hundred bucks a hotel room for two nights you know a couple hundred bucks oh, we're right driving. paint we're driving paint okay driving <laughs> paint entry fee a couple hundred bucks you've you spent a thousand bucks you know mm -hmm. for for your kid to go and do this thing to maybe win you know x amount of dollars right mm -hmm. now that's as an individual who a privateer guy who wants to fund somebody that's a lot less than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to fund a team or three hundred fifty thousand dollars or a million well, it dollars. sounds like you could actually get a return on your investment too even at 10 grand you're like hey tyler i'll fund i'll fully fund your thing but i get 10 percent of the winnings <laughs> and if he and if he wins it's a thousand yeah, so maybe a break even there but uh maybe maybe yeah. got to negotiate 20 percent. yeah um, maybe you get 20 percent or 30 yeah. percent or whatever it is you know yeah but that's how the, the you can be a backer you know it's like yeah you know, people do that in gambling and you know so, you got to have a horse right so it's like in the future, I might be out and old and, and be like, okay, hey, well, hey, kid, I like you. I'm gonna pay for you. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sponsor you, and I'm gonna pay for you to go to these things totally. And yeah, and you give me thirty percent. Now, not only does that kid win that money, but now he could possibly, like a Tommy Greenleaf right now, he could go. He could probably go get individual sponsorship, right? Like, uh, I, I don't know exactly at what rate, but like he could probably go to Planet Eclipse and say, Hey, can you guys give me a gun? You know, I mean, I get he already won a gun, but Hey, can you guys give me a gun as an individual yeah. privateer guy? So he gets a gun, maybe two guns, maybe five guns, right? Maybe he goes to JT, maybe he goes to um, HK and says, Hey, can you guys sponsor me? And, and HK goes, yeah, I'll sponsor Tommy Greenlee. If you guys just, you just won the $10,000, you're a hot ticket item right now. Not only, did I pay for Tommy or pay for, you know, Tommy to go to this event, but now Tommy's got a five gun deal from plenty Eclipse. He's got a personal sponsorship from HK, you know, maybe he's got a, um, a Hormesis sponsorship where I, where I give him a, a signature line, you know, all of a sudden now he just made another 20, 30, 40, 50 grand. Right. Yeah. As a player, uh, as Oliver. an individual player. Oliver, I do. I gotta get like we gotta get back to because I'm extra curious now. Like how how does this thing generate revenue? Because that's an important thing to keep to be able to keep it going. So we were talking about okay. phase two, right? This is phase two. You're kind of doing what you did last year, but now internationally, trying to plant the seed okay. across the globe. So how how does All it right. get to a point to where it it financially makes sense for you guys to continue doing this? Okay, so now we've planted one on one fields across the world. Okay. Like they're across the world now, right? Once these things start generating money as a field, which I'm teaching you how to do when I come to your field for this tour, I'm teaching you how to make money on this. Okay. This isn't just a one-off thing. You can be running this on a regular basis. You can be generating money right now year next year. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a massive invitational. Okay. Now each field who has an elite one-on-one -on -one field is going to be eligible to send their local, uh, their local players, their local talent who will be registered on the app, 
okay? So we'll be able to look at the UK and say, okay, uh, Scotty and Jimmy and, and Eddie are the best three players in UK. They're invited to the Invitational, right? Okay. Now, each of these fields has has purchased a kit, so there's a there's a there's a you know a, a staple. Now, when we come to the Invitational, we have all the best players in the world, uh, like amateur players, and I'm inviting Tyler Harmon. I'm inviting Marcelo Margot. I'm inviting Fedorov. I'm inviting um, Archie. You know, and we're going to do a pro version of it for a substantial amount of money, right? And the way that we're going to generate money is pay-per-view per match. Okay, right? And in the future, beyond that, more fields who want to obtain uh, beyond the tour, because this year I'm giving, I'm only giving a small amount of fields away or uh, uh, the ability for fields to buy, to get into our kits. In the future, let's say SC Village wants to be a member, right? Well, they've got to pay me a, a federation fee. And they can have a kit, and then now their field is ha, is part of the federation, and anybody who plays at that field is eligible to come play at the Elite One on One Super Invitational event, mm. which will be a bang up, which will be a bang off event, right? Excellent. But now I have yeah. SC Village, now I have uh, Kiki, now I have um, you know all the biggest fields across the nation who are paying into this, and their field is getting more credible because. Let's say you wanted to play Elite One on One and you wanted to go enter into the invitational and you wanted to potentially win that large cash prize or you wanted to make a name for yourself. So either you can play at this field who's part of the federation, or there's this other field, well, they don't have they don't have a field. It's I mean, just like it it's just like right now going finding fields with airball or finding fields with sup air bunkers rather than the uh air ups, you know, because that's not what we compete that's on. You know, it's like right. imperative. If you have a tournament field and you're the only field in that region, you're going to get all the teams. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Exactly. Genius. Genius. You know? And and I feel like we're on the brink of, of an era where, like, for instance, um, the, the event that I'm doing in Germany, right? He's a very young field owner. You know him. Uh, uh, the German guy, Fri Frizzy. Uh, He's, he's, he bought a field from an older guy. Okay. And he literally said, Hey, I can run this business, you know, really good. Do you want to sell this to me or give me a partnership in it? And he took it over. Right. And I guess, you know, eventually the other guy got out of it. But the point is he's a new, young, youthful, entrepreneurial spirit who loves paintball. Mm -hmm. Right. He's not one of these older guys the older generation who's sitting around counting their money being like, okay, uh, let's just, you know, we'll give them a, we'll give them a couple of hyperball bunkers and, you know, they'll be happy. You know, it's like th these guys are, the, we're on the brink of a new era of, of not only new field ownerships, but new business ownerships, you know, including Hormesis, including, you know, flow, these types of guys, there's a new era of individuals, young, bright spirited, entrepreneurial, individuals who care about the sport <laughs> Absolutely. and who want to make the sport better, you know, and who realize it's not all about money. Money will come once, uh, once they've done their passion. Right. So this, you know, this field in Germany is rips it, you know, like it's a, such a, such a, a busy field, you know, and he loves it. He loves paintball. Right. So I feel like I know what business. field is it where the DPL was. It's a gotcha, gotcha splat or something. Gotcha. Right? Okay. Nice. Uh, let me let me let me confirm that. Uh, oh, that's amazing. Shout out to German paintball. Freezy. And Freezy. Is that Freezy. The one? Freezy. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's a gotcha fun factory. Gotcha Got fun it. factory. So, anyways, the point is, is we're on the brink of a new era of, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jason, Jason Edwards just picked up Legacy Paintball Park, you know, mm -hmm. and I see that it's so busy every day, and you know he's. He's got the energy to put into it, you know, and yes. the care about it, you know, and that's what we need in the sport. We need to care about it. Right. Mm -hmm. We need to we need to not just sit back and say, OK, well, you know, like, yeah, man, I'm not going to lie. I was talking to, to Glenn Forrester and I have history with Glenn Forrester. You know, I played on his team. You know, he was I looked up to him as a player and I said, hey, I want to do this at your field. And he's like, well, how much money are you going to give me? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, 
I don't know if this is the place for it, you know? And then it was like, you know, Geo, Geo's like, uh, yeah, you know, come do it here, you know? So anyways, the point is, is that, you know, there's, there's. You need people that see the vision. You need people who see the vision. And even if you don't see the vision, man, trust the vision, you know, <laughs> trust in the people, trust in the people who are around you. You know, it's yeah, the same sure. thing. You set up the, okay, we're going to do a play the game podcast. Well, man, I, maybe I didn't see the vision, but I trust you guys. Okay, let's do it. You know, what can I do? How can I support it? You know, can I come on? Can I like something? Can I share something? You know, mm. it's like, that's the, that's the beauty of community. You know, I, I was listening to something the other day. It's like, you know, community, we don't have to necessarily dwell together. We don't have to live close. We just have to live deeply with each other, you know, you know, and that's, you, that's it. We, we live in a PayPal community. Have you liked all of our videos on YouTube? <laughs> uh, maybe not on YouTube, on Instagram though. <laughs> all right. I guess you have, I guess you have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll gladly do it. Dude, don't let him talk no, to you that way, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll oh, do man. It. I love it. Oliver, I've hey. commented on it. I know. You show us all the love, brother. I'm just kidding. Dude, I just got to say one more time. Shout out to the Valentine's Day special with Ollie Lang. I mean, Ollie, it's, it's amazing to uh, be holding the heart up. You know, shout out to the YouTube. Go like, comment, do the whole share. Everything that Oliver's talking about. because You guys got to so make important. up the likes for Oliver here. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah you guys gotta man. start hitting the like. like. <laughs> it's also fun to hit the like, you know. It's like you get it like a, a little. So, I love hitting the like and the heart. Like yeah. the heart lights up yeah. red, you know. Like it makes me happy. It's nice. You get to totally, see the heart. yeah. Ex see, that's the funny, weird thing, right? Yeah. It's like you just hit the heart and it makes you happy, you know, and you <laughs> feel good, you know. Boom. Yeah. Then it hits the algorithms, and the algorithms go through the roof, and all of a sudden, <laughs> PTG is the number just one rated cool. thing on YouTube. You know, also baseball is the biggest sport in history. You know, it's like all you did is just hit the like button. You know? Simple mm -hmm. like, bam, mm -hmm. hit that like button. And Ollie, <laughs> so you're going to uh, Canada as well. Where are you going to be going in Canada? Uh, we're looking to be in somewhere near Toronto. I'm, I'm okay. solidifying mm -hmm. that yet. I, I don't have the, uh, I don't have that ingrained then, yet, engraved in stone yet. But yeah, it's, South it's America, soon. UK three or four different stops in the USA and then Thailand as well. So you're going to be yeah. busy, man. So I, I want to say that if, if there's one that's close to you, like don't <laughs> miss out, yeah, you know, don't like hesitate, Get out like there. Tyler knows, Marcelo knows you have to travel to these things. Like yes, some people absolutely. are like, Oh, you should, you should do one in uh you should do one over here in uh, Minnetonka, uh, Minnesota. And I'm like, well, I would love to, but we did one in Ohio and that was the closest we could get yeah. to it. If you could just drive a little bit, you know, we're, we're doing our part of going, you know, for a uh, four week, uh, sorry, eight weeks, two months, oh. all the way around the globe. If you could just drive six hours to join oh. us would be great. You know, I think and people like, forgot, man. Cause in the early days, I mean, we used to we, drive. We would travel so much, we and we still drive. do. Who, I mean, to get to who, practice. Who was that? Play. Was was that somebody the other day uh, saying, "Don't for, don't be afraid to make the drive"? I think that was Mike Arena on 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 the oh, HK. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I saw Dude, that. I love right. that. Don't be afraid to make the drive. Don't be afraid to make the drive, man. 100%. Look, the thing is, is at the end of the day, is we all need to. We, if you want something. Whatever your dream is, whatever your reality, the thing that you want to create, you want to manifest it in this reality, man, you have to sacrifice something. Mm. Okay. You have to put something, you have to realize if I want to go make that Southern, that San Diego dynasty team, and I live in Northern California, I got to drive down there. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's I eight know. hours. And that's nine hours drive. I mean, that's, you know? how I made, that's how I made the team. I called, and I said, know. I'm going to try out. And then I drove seven hours back and forth multiple weekends seven hours seven hours seven I, hours back. i remember that in your truck in your yeah. truck <laughs> yeah. i remember you know, that and then then you got on the team and then it was southwest all day baby. <laughs> dude i'm a list supreme a list that's up in this right house. you know, you know I so there's anywhere that's what that means when you got the a that means you're anywhere <laughs> anywhere on the plane <laughs> I like the Southwest back in the day when you had to sit facing the guy. Remember oh yeah, that one? I remember that. Were one. You what? Too, were you guys too? Were you guys too I young do. for that? I've I never remember. been on a plane where you faced somebody like a train. Yeah, there was 
there was a Southwest flight and or yeah. Southwest at one point you had to face each other. And it was like, mm-hmm. that's, that's, a- that's a little wild. That's why it's like a train. Yeah. yeah that's funny. Yeah. It's like a train. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, is that you have to, you have to make some, you have to make it happen, you yeah. know? And it's, it's definitely not always easy. It's not just a 30 minute drive. You know, sometimes it's a six hour, 10 hour drive, you know, sometimes it's a flight, you know, that's what I loved about Bushby, you know, Bushby Absolutely. came out from Colorado. He, he flew to Chicago, met his dad, drove six hours. He was the first one at the field. I was like, this kid's going to win, you know, and he did, you know, Bushby's probably one of my favorite up and coming players these days. You know, he's got a heart of gold, you know, and I want to meet more of these Bushbys. You know, mm-hmm. I want to see who else are the guys out there. You know, you guys got the, you guys got the, um, the high honor of, of holding this, you know, this, uh, uh, the, the camp you guys just did. And, you know, you guys got to see a lot of this young talent, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, these guys are taking the efforts and making the steps. And this is what's going to really take paintball into the next level is not only the ability to have these types of training camps, but for the people to show up and want to do them, you know? So it's the same thing with the elite one-on-one. I can only do as much as I can do, which is a lot. I'm bringing you, all of this and I'm coming from halfway across the world and I'm showing up and I'm delivering it to you at a very fair cost. That's just going right back to the field. Right. And I'm doing my part because I want to search for the best players in the world. I want to know who the best players in the world are. I want to be able to acknowledge the best players and I want to be able to compensate the best players, you know, and I want to be able to help you on your journey of being as good as you want to be. Okay. Like if you're, if you're Cameron Bushby or if you're Tommy Greenlee or Todd Boyer, and you want to be a pro player, let me set you up for, for success, you know, and already showing up to the duel, winning, coming to play the grand finale. Those eight guys there are already, you know, going to be successful. I guarantee you right there. Mm-hmm. Th- those eight they're they're already, you know, on the upswing. Yeah. They're Absolutely. building that brand, which is, I mean, it's so important. That's why it's very important in this modern day and age that you do, incorporate the social media into your your repertoire as well you're going to need it you know you got to start building that and you have to show your sponsors love too if there's anybody supporting you even if it's your mom and dad take a picture of them and post them up and say thank you mom and dad you know and and uh, show love for the people who are supporting you on this journey and that is going to resonate with everyone that starts to follow you on this journey as you try to become the best paintball player you possibly can so we can't yeah. wait to see it progress, Ollie. And um, I mean, shoot, I might have to uh, open a one v one field or something. You know, out let's here in the do desert. it. No, this is the, this is the future. We're gonna do this. You know, um, PTG. I will, think we'll put up a one v one field. <laughs> I think you're. It's I coming. think you're right though too. It's like everybody's got these social uh, social platforms now. You know, it's like you've got you can create your own brand now. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I was kind of. I'm not gonna say that I was. I missed it, <laughs> but. You know, the thing is, is now it's very important to have your own social media platform and to for be to be sharing and for you to be, you know, yeah, showing your vulnerability, showing showing your, your highs, showing your lows, you know, and, and creating your personal brand, you know, so to say. Um, social media is definitely the future and the way that things grow now. You know, uh, I think what's cool. One thing to segue on, too, is that, you know, like when we started, it was magazines. Right. Or yeah. at least when when I started, mm-hmm. it was magazines. And. And I remember, you know, looking through magazines was the way I got my inspiration, you know, um, and reading the articles. And then obviously I became a part of that, which was also another, you know, um, mm-hmm. addition to it. And uh, and unfortunately, I lost a lot of those magazines. I I, mm-hmm. I, I threw them oh, away, you know, yeah. they, they 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 left, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, I will say that the, between social media and what we're doing now with the. Um, with the great American paintball magazine is going to be very important because, you know, we got to tell the stories, you know, the stories are what builds the, the brands, what builds the sport and what builds the, the passion of the, the, the want, you know, it's like, who do I want to win between Tyler and Marcelo, you know, because I want to know your story and I want to know your story, you know, and we didn't do that so much in the elite one-on-one. Uh, so far but in the future that's going to be a big part of it you know Mm -hmm. with this with with the great american uh, paintball magazine we're going to be telling the stories of these individuals you know so like it's 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 important to subscribe you know and 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 follow and get involved and become part of the story you know i got mine you got yours oh yeah i subscribed i'm not missing out on that so you're, you're talking about the gap yeah absolutely 
Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Gap. What is Gap? It's the uh, the Great is it on? Horm- it's probably on Hormesis. It's probably on Hormesis if you want to subscribe. It's, yeah, it's GapPaintball.com. G A P Paintball.com. Yeah. And yeah, I think it is exactly. also on on the Hormesis site. Yeah, but uh, so I, I mean, I'm excited the- just to have just to have you know actual print again. You know, those are That's really cool saying. things to show off and share. And, you know, like, it's not that cool to go, hey, look at my social media page. You know, like, yeah. that's that's not cool. It just seems corny. It just doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel right. Yeah, you know, yeah. but like, hey, check out Tangible. this magazine, you know, or this book yeah. that has all of this great inspiration, some articles about our team, you know, maybe something totally. about me or, or the, the, the business, you know, like, that's yeah. something to be proud of. Well, also, that's what I'm saying is I threw all those away. I lost history, you know, I lost totally. I lost the story, yeah. you know. I, I, I'm ashamed to say that I, I, I blew that, you know, but we're also going to start, start it up again, you know? So it's like, these things are going to be collector's items and they're going to be something that's going to be in history. And now I get a second chance to not lose history, you know? (laughs) And the, you know, the point is, is become a part of history and get into it and become, you know, uh, solidify your name in the paintball world. You know, this is, we need you, you know, everybody here you know, who's listening. That's right. I guess the real question is, are you close enough to grab a rooster and bring it onto the show? (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, you'll love this, Tyler. So the other, the other night I was having like a hard night sleep. Yeah. And, uh, it's like, I couldn't sleep. And then it was like, maybe like 4am. Right. And it was just dead silent, just like nothing. And one rooster goes, Right. And I was like, oh, no, it's that early, you know, like they're they're going to start. It's time to get up, you know. And and honestly, dude, it was such a cool experience. It was like another one from the next next door neighbor village. All of a sudden it was this symphony of cockadoodle doos, you know, and I could hear it from miles away. It was like it was like, you know, one was here, one was here, one was here, one was here. It was like beautiful. I was like, I was like, wow, this is like a song. You know, yeah, that's great. Oh, they're they're working, they're working hard. <laughs> I was thinking, I, I was thinking about going out in the middle of the night and just giving a nice roost and then seeing if they followed me. If it starts, oh, uh, that'd be uh, yeah. a nice experiment. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> you got to start one. <laughs> I'll record start it. it I'll send it to you. Yeah, please, dude. Nice. We got to see that. Hey, you're you're a trendsetter. We know that, Ollie. You're gonna start the call and they're gonna call back. You know what I mean? That's just the way it works. <laughs> Oh, 100 percent So, Oliver, is there any chance you're gonna be at uh in Las Vegas or at the Summit Awards? There is a chance. Yeah, I was just speaking to Tom Cole. He wants me to come and do a presentation on the Elite One on One for the Summit, uh for the Summit. Oh, wow. Now, nice. cool. now I would like to come to Vegas. I don't know if I'm going to be there, but I'm I'm the plan is to come and be living in America March, April, May. Uh, and cause we're, we're finally opening that store in San Francisco no way. and, um, yeah, so I'm going to be living there and we're going to, uh, activate that store and I'll be doing the tour and then I'll be working closely with Alex for a couple months. And, um, yeah, so I'm available in those couple months. I'll probably come to practice awesome. a little bit, maybe, cool. maybe get shot by you a little bit and you know. <laughs> have some fun. Nice. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, damn, that is that is huge news that you guys are going to have a shop in the city as well. That's that's pretty monumental. Well, I think we spoke about that last time. It was a little preemptive, but mm-hmm. you know, everything's the right the success is the right people, right time, right place, right? That's the combination of that's success, right? So, so this is the timing is is happening now, you know. Amazing. For the store. Absolutely amazing. And we do have a ton of people who showed out on the uh the Discord chat in PTG world, so I think we'll start sounding off and I'm not sure if Joe is going to come on live, but we have, or I'm not sure if we even reached out to Joe to come on live. Did not. We no. can message him right now if he wants to save his you know, last. Let's see. Where is um, he? I didn't, I didn't even. Oh, JB. JB. Yeah. Joe Barrett. Joe Barrett. That's right. Yep. That makes so it easier. We'll start diving into this. I love this one from Jimmy Hickey, who is the owner of finley hats and oh yes yes he's a also lad. uprising he's amazing he says oliver heart is what wins tournaments and we have heart quoted by alex frage i first saw this quote in your segment on serial killers and it's been a guiding principle of my life beyond just the sport what does having heart mean to you and what else does it take to win 
He said, glad you came back. Love what you guys are doing with Hormesis and the Joust. Thank you for being an inspiration to so many of us. Yeah, cool. No, yeah, you're a legend also, man. I love your hats. I love what you're doing. I love that you're supporting the sport and growing in. Yeah, Hart, you know, Hart was uh, Hart was my first uh, my first uh, big teacher in the in the sport, and I learned that, you know, luckily, thankfully to Shane Pastana, you know, it was really like just more of a of a metaphor of like, you know, feel, you know, don't get so much in the head and with all the possibilities because the the mind's not a very good. Uh, it's not very good at making decisions, actually. The heart makes the decisions, you know? And so when you play with heart and you live from heart, it's easy. It's, you don't, you don't have to think, you know? You just do. And, you know, and when you do, when you're, when you're from that place, you actually do really, you do it right. You know, you do it correctly. And, you know, it's, it's, it's actually, it's actually easier, you know? Um, you kind of bypass this, this notion. So, so having heart and living from heart is is really just feeling and you know being aligned with with what you're doing and and moving through with that and um yeah i still live from the heart every day so thank you for yeah, reminding yeah. me from that and um the heart is just such an intelligent uh um such an intelligent thing you know it's if you really start to think about it and investigate into it, it it's just pure magic and you know it's what's keeping us alive you know it's beating it never takes a break you know, it's got this little pacemaker in there that just, you know, is getting some sort of pulse from the universe and it's pumping, you know, and, and we've realized that the heart is just this ultimate love factory that's that's cleansing our blood every day, all day, around the clock, you know, for as long as we live. So it's like you got to really honor the heart, you know, it's like, mm. it's like a, such yeah. a, an amazing um, organ, you know, well, the it's, mind it's beyond an organ. The mind is like a trickster, right? But your heart, your heart will always tell you the truth. You know, your heart, your heart knows, but the mind can be quite tricky at points. Yeah, well, I think the, I think the aspect of the mind is to be able to, is to be able to gain some reins on the mind, you know, yeah. and, <laughs> and not allow it to trick you. And you're right. Uh, it's, it's a, the mind is a calculation device, you know, it's, it's, it's organizing your reality and, 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 and piecing it all together and, um, you know, it's, it's definitely valuable, you know, so you don't oh, want to, you don't want to, you, you don't want to push it away. Also, you know, yeah. you want to have mind and you want to sharpen your mind and you want to stimulate your mind and you want to get more intellectual. And, you know, the mind is an incredible, you need to be the master of your mind, you know? And then I think I, the, the heart is my master, you know? Mm. Yeah. And when you have both in symbiotic harmony, working together, mind, heart, spirit, all of it together, it's a pretty formidable opponent. When you when you That's apply right. it to whatever you want to apply that to, you're gonna have some success there. If you're working from your heart and you're doing it with tact and with passion, you're gonna go places. Damn, love that. I love that word, tact. Mm. Tactics, baby. <laughs> All right, we have Taylor H. Oliver, being that it's the year of the dragon and given Dynasty's current dominant run, can we expect some limited edition Dynasty and Hormesis clothing collab? Maybe with some jumpsuits. Ooh, well, uh, good, good news is, is, is he part of the, is he part of the uh, dynasty, um, the, the club Champs club? Uh, I don't know if Taylor H is, I'm not sure. Well, not already possible. in the works is both of those for the oh. champs club. Ooh, but let's champs, go. Champs clubs only. We just champs dropped, club we only. just dropped some secret news on PTG. That's oh, so, hush, am, I not so, <laughs> am I not supposed to say that? I guess we can Sorry. say whatever we want. <laughs> okay. I'll probably, I'll probably get a call from Alex later going, whacked up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he tunes in. He's he gonna hear he it. tunes in. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, uh, talk about, talk about heart is, is eggs right there. Huh? Oh, heart of absolutely. Hearts. Yeah. He man. has, he has transcended so much in the last like five years is such a, I mean, maybe he always was. I, I didn't get to experience it when I first got on the team. Maybe, maybe, you know, for some reason that was a phase of his career where he was a little checked out, you know, and, and something reinvigorated uh, his passion. But the last like five years, he's been an, an exceptional leader. You know, he reminds me a, a lot of the way you would lead the team with, you know, he has these great speeches, these great moments, really timely with stuff. Talk about tact, you know, like his delivery and his ability to recognize kind of what needs to be said and when has been really, really masterful over the last couple of seasons. 
Totally. I think I think a lot of it was the hormesis. I think a lot of the uh, hormesis yeah. gave him another gave him another second win. I, I know I he agree. played really well at one event. Um, but you're right. I I don't get to see him as much as you do in terms of the team huddle. But like what I felt from him from World Cup was powerful, you know. And actually, what I learned from him in the Philadelphia event was even more powerful. Like he won to me, he won the event. You know, he was a player. He didn't play, but he was a player. And then he was like in the booth. He was like vi shooting video. He was like in the divisional. He was in like the divisional pits. He was like mm -hmm. filming the, you know, the the uh, army military game or something like that. Like I looked at him. I was like, bro, you you're wearing like so many masks right now. Like you're like, you know, you're you're everything, you know. And everybody loves you and you know, you're, you're, you're winning, you know, like you're, you're like, he was even, I remember he was like damage beat us or something happened. Uh, we, we got knocked out by X factor or something like that. And then yeah. I remember like the next, the next uh, match I saw him like in their pit filming and I was like, who does that? <laughs> who does that? <laughs> He's like, so excited about you? it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how do they even let you, you know? <laughs> uh, he's the mayor now. He's the mayor. Well, damn, he's man. definitely the mayor. I mean, in 2020 is when we both birthed our projects that we're, yeah. you know, having so much fun with these days. And and from that moment to now, there has been so much creativity in the space of paintball that we've seen on the audio side of things, video, uh, clothing, all of the above has really just surged in the last few years. So it's cool to be a part of this resurgence because nothing's promised for paintball i mean this could disappear next week if we if we don't treat it the way it deserves to be treated and give it the best light possible so it's cool to see so many people out there and shout out to everybody who's nominated for all these awards that are going on that we're going to be giving away out in las vegas at the nxl if you are out there please support as well get a ticket go show up uh, support paintball. It's going to be a fun night. I think, where's it going to be held at? It's going to be a Listen, cool spot. Listen, you have got to go. Talk about showing up, what Oliver's been talking about this entire episode. This is one of those things that if you are going to the Las Vegas event, I don't care if you already booked your flight for Sunday night, change it to Monday morning. This is one of those things that you have to show up for. They are trying to put together one of the coolest productions our sport has ever seen. We, it, It's at where they have like the, the massive uh, club at the Sahara, so it's by the pool area. The second biggest screen in all of Las Vegas, the uh, the sphere is number one. Um, and, you know, there's going to be obviously a DJ. It's going to be a whole red carpet event. There's going to be, you know, cool backsplashes and interviews. And it's going to be like our version of, you know, the SBs or, uh, you know, the NFL honors. It's going to be a really exciting thing. And on top of it, it's a player's party. So, you know, it's Sunday night. The event's going to be over. There's going to be booze there. Everybody's going to be able to hang out with the pros and the, and the OGs, the legends industry people but if we don't show up if we don't show up i guarantee you it's the last year that they do it so true show up yeah. this is all going to be broadcast as broadcasted on go sports they're going to package this and really try to sell it to outside sponsors they're trying to make it a massive production we need all the players to show up tickets are 15 dollars, which is insanely cheap i thought tickets would have been like 50 bucks in all honesty at least so for a vegas style event um, check out the Sahara and look, look at the, uh, I forgot the name of the, the pool area you can find it. Really I don't know quick. what the name of it is, but I know Ollie's jumping in it. Bam! <laughs> He's just cannonball. <laughs> it's the, you know me so well, bro. You know uh, me so well. So <laughs> it's the Azilo, Azilo ultra pool. I mean, it looks incredible. There's cabanas. There's all sorts of stuff. It's going to be a really cool time. So again, it's going to be fun. And just showing up it, Show and out. having a good time is going to be a great way to support the league and what they're trying to do to legitimize our sport. Please be there. Um, I, I just can't stress that enough. So head over to again majorleaguepb.com and uh, all it's you can't miss it. You know it's the summit tickets. It's right there. Mm -hmm. Get tickets. Change your flights. Do whatever you got to do. Let's go Sunday night. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be one of the coolest things our, our sports done in a long time. Hey, uh, you you reminded me, Tyler, of the. I, it was, oh I think, Marcelo's fir first t uh, first seven man, or maybe you were. I can't remember exactly the scenario, but we won the seven man in Vegas. You remember uh, that? Well, yeah, 2012. That was my. So was that like, was the first tournament I played with Dynasty, but I just guessed it with Dynasty. I wasn't on the that's team. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But Tyler, were you on the team? I no. got on 13 the year, the season okay. right after. 
but do you remember that i went i went swimming in the pool i do the, remember this the, yeah <laughs> and then they i was in there for like 30 minutes <laughs> and they were like i remember just pe like swimming and then like looking up at the hey, bouncer yo. and the bouncer's like you walk it out and i was like um, <laughs> but I, did that, I did that for so long i remember one of the bouncers was like i'm taking off my shoes i'm coming in and i looked over and i was like oh man i don't know if i want him to get into the pool like that'll be kind of embarrassing you know he's gonna like you know you know i was like okay i'll just swim to the side and, and nothing happened oh yeah what happened they let you they're just like get out of here oh no they tried to like muscle me actually you yeah. know who saved my life was alex Saved my life that night. Eggs? They were yeah. like, they were like, they were like trying to like look at me like I was like counting cards and like you little punk. And I'm like <laughs> swimming in the pool, man. It's a pool. Yeah. Come on, you know? let me let me live. Let me live There's a, a pool party. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in the party. I'm in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I heard that we absolutely can't go in the pool at this pool party. So let's not do that because that'll be another reason we can't come back. So everyone listening right now, check, let's, check, uh, check, check, check. <laughs> Dude, they better put up some uh, shock advice wire from, or something. Advice from Tom Cole. Advice from Tom Cole. Oh, so. Man. Yes, and that that yeah. is so important. Let's let's make sure it's a fun event, a good hard. This event. was not the players' party, <laughs> FYI. When I did it, okay, it had nothing no. to do with paintball. Yeah, nothing to do with gone. paintball. They didn't know. They, they did not That's know. A green we light. Yeah. That's a green yeah. light. That also <laughs> reminds me. Speaking of fresh eggs and uh, and pool parties, at his wedding when he got married and he thought that I was just picking him up on, on my shoulder just to carry him around. Like, Oh, look at you. You're married. Oh yeah. That and little did best. he know, little did he know Into I was taking the pool. him straight to the pool. Got him. Even, Boom. even I remember, I remember I fell in love with Margaret too, even more at that, that, that date. Cause she's like, you're in the pool. And then she jumped in the pool with him. I was like, yes. That's so great. <laughs> oh, shorts a mess. Shorts a mess. Shorts a mess. Dude, uh, man, timeless memories. All right, so back to the uh, Discord questions. Thank you, everybody, for sounding off in here. We've got P-Ball Wiz. He's wondering, celebrity 1v1 tournament, when? Bam, I love this question. Dude. Yeah. So so what's what I, I, I there's there's renditions and there's spinoffs of this that need to come. I don't have the time for it yet because right now it's like a seeding time. But like what I want to do is I want to do jousts are awesome first of all jousts are awesome so you can do like we could do celebrity jousts you know we could have a mix match celebrity you know like tyler you're a general marcelo you're a general and then you know you've got some celebrities you know tyler's got some celebrities and then you got some other pros and we throw them all together and we play right yeah and it's like you know you could do that we could do team jousts you know we could do heat versus dynasty in a joust right mm -hmm. where you send out one player at a time right um you could do definitely celebrity duels, you know, like you could have classic, you know, duels. You could have like Chris Osoya playing, you know, Bob Long or something like that, right? You know, it's like you could do something like that. Um, but the the coolest one that I think are, is coming up is doing a tag team. Tag team mm -hmm. duels is, as I think, the future, that's, you know? That's so what you, I was going to ask. Is there a, if there is a 2v2 format of this or anything that you Well, thought? so I think in the, in the future – like I've already seen somebody in somewhere in UK, they've expanded the 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 sides a little bit more, and they they're playing two on two on it, which mm -hmm. is cool. I like that, and I like to see the evolution of it. Yeah. Um, but for me right now, I want to try to keep it, you know, kind of, of course, uh, uh, standardized. But I think the two versus two version would be like, let's just say it's me and Ryan versus you two, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but but we have no pit crew. We have no pit crew, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm a player, I'm the pit crew, and I'm a coach all at once. Right. So it's like super hybridized. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And then and then I send Ryan out. If Ryan's winning, I, you know, I let him ride for a while, just like in Vegas. Right. As soon as he needs a break, then I come in. Right. And again, it's going to match up. So, like, let's just say I'm matching up well against you, Tyler. Then maybe I have to play against you. Right. And if Ryan's not matching up against you, then, you know, then I, you, you throw your strong hand in at that moment. Right. So there's there's a lot of possibility with Damn, that, you know, that and then be, that would be a dog fight. I could already see and that. Then, that one that would, be, would be fun. <laughs> and then, and then again, you know, in the future, there's there could be a two versus two version of it. You know, again, yeah. I'm looking at this, you know, and this was something short and I spoke about so many years ago. Was we're like, let's make paintball like tennis, you know. So in the future, mm -hmm. definitely two on two, without a doubt. 
you know, yeah. um, and just maybe a little bit more of an expanded field, you know, but right now I can only focus on one thing. And I feel like this is the easiest, most efficient. It's, it's, it's again, it's still confusing for some people, but once they get it, they'll get it. And once they get it, then I can say, okay, well, let's just expand it 10 feet and five feet and add two more bunkers. And we got a two on two field, you know, yeah. and then, you know, we can do celebrity, you know, there's so many options. I wanted to get bear versus Marky at, oh at the grand gosh. finale as a, as a, as a duel, <laughs> but but bear didn't even respond. And then Marky just sent me like, you know, one of those and like laughed. <laughs> and I was like, maybe he was into it. I don't know. So, <laughs> you know I didn't oh, get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get an absolute, absolute response, but I did message him. I said, Hey, look, let's do the globe. Let's do a joust glow ball event, you know, mm. at night in a super rad, event, uh, super rad venue. And we'll do a joust. and It'll, it'll be amazing. You know, that because the joust amazing, is a little, yeah. The joust is a lot of fun, guys. Like when you guys get into the joust, man, the joust is cool, dude. The joust, the joust is a great way for everybody to have fun and everybody to learn, right? So let's just say sure. both you guys are both you guys are generals, and I allot you, you know, uh, Marcel. I give you like a, you know, maybe a couple amateur guys, a couple novice guys, a couple rookie guys, a couple straight beginners, right? Same thing with for you, Tyler. All of a sudden, now we're all. Uh, in this team together so we got this unity we got this bond marcelo margot tyler Harmon's my my general you know so i have this boost right okay and i've got tim and i've got frank they're amateur players right so those are your like kings and queens so to say or you know your mm -hmm. you know your 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 good pieces and then you've got some pawns right and you got to make work with it but now the pawns are rubbing elbows with you know tyler Harmon and you know and marcelo margot they never had a chance to play uh they'll never have a chance to play with you on a team you know, mm. uh, unless they make it on the heat or dynasty within the next. Couple that years, is special. Right? Those those moments are, are really timeless, man. Totally, yeah. totally. And, and you can see it like the generals have a lot of fun, too, in the, in it. They're they're an active participant of the match. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's really like the everybody always says this is chess with guns. It's like really chess with guns. If you're the general, you know, you've got to know who to play, when to play them, you know, so. Love and that. everybody learns. That's the most important thing. Everybody learns and everybody connects and everybody becomes uh, like a, you know, a bigger friendship, bigger family. You know, it's mm -hmm. like all of a sudden, oh, hey, I don't have a team, um, but I know I know you from the joust and you know, you're on my team. Hey, do you want to start a team together or or maybe hey, you don't have a team? Well, come play on my team, you know, so it's yeah. a great. And, and again, every tour we're going to do every tour stop we're going to do this year, we're hosting a joust as well so there's a joust on saturday and then the duels on sunday Amazing. so the joust is all inclusive everybody can play there's only 16 spots per duel as well so okay so a little well, little yeah. little bit awesome. more information. young theo my son is gonna love this because <clears throat> he's uh he's doing chess club on wednesdays you know what i mean holding it down on the chessboard and we've been playing wow. a lot of chess around the house so he's definitely going to be into that whole dynamic of paintball and he's still young but I, I'm really looking forward. I know we talked about this before the show, Ollie. Like my dream is to play paintball alongside him. And that's how I started with my old man. Shout out to Bob Harmon. I love you. And uh, Yeah, I love Bob. Yes, sir. And it's just like it's one of those things that's kind of surreal. And I can't wait to just watch paintball continue to flourish and, and all these different projects that everybody's got cooking up. Just keep kicking ass and, and having fun playing so does, paintball out there. Oh, yeah. Does Theo, does Theo beat you or do you beat him? Well, he, Just, he actually checkmated me a couple times ruthlessly. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. This <laughs> like, and I had to get out of it. But he put the pressure on pretty heavy in, in one game. And uh, but for the most part, I've, I've got him to where I have to I don't well, you know, I want him to continue to play, but also learn. So uh, I don't go too crazy on him, but he is getting really good. And now that he's doing these classes, he's probably going to whoop me up here in a second. Was it a check or a checkmate? Check. Yeah, check me. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, he just got me with the check, and then I had yeah. to like pivot. Bob and Weave. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Weaverton, Weaver. back at That's it again, it. even on the chessboard. You know, Lang, yeah. we have Brian Catania. <laughs> this is Tyler. <laughs> Bob and Louis. <laughs> Woo! Bob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> All right, Brian Catania. This is a great question, Oliver. If you had to leave Dynasty and join a pro team from the bottom ten and try to help elevate them into a top pro team. What team would you choose and why? And then he gives us a list. So I'm going to read them off to you. Try to try to hang in there. 
Miami Kings, which is now the ML Kings, or which was the ML Kings, Aftermath, AC Diesel, Austin Notorious, Seattle Uprising, Brooklyn Bears, LA Ironman, already did that, Blast Camp, Paintball Fit, or Chicago Aftershock? I'd probably go Aftermath. Wow. I thought for sure you would say Aftershock. I mean, it would be cool to 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 hang out with Todd Abson, but I mean, yeah, doesn't it doesn't impress me so much. You know? Aftermath, I love that. I love that call. Yeah. That'd be tight. Aftermath, Aftermath would be fun because I think they're all like just really like just a group of kids that just mm. they actually need somebody like me. They just yeah. need some yeah. one person who can go in there and yeah, help like, them, and the I way. bet they and then I think they'd actually really get it. And they're 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 young enough to like still listen and be keen, like Aftermath or Aftershock, like. You know, I don't know if they'd listen, you know, like, that's true. you know that's what true. it's like. You guys, yeah, you, yeah. both you guys know what it's like. It's like, you, you know, the way you speak about it so much. Everybody doesn't, everybody's like, yeah, I'm so tired of hearing Tyler. I'm so tired of hearing Oliver. I'm so tired of hearing Marcelo talk, tell me the same thing every time. It's <laughs> like, but if you had, if you had aftermath ears, they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <that's> what <laughs> What's yeah. great is that, is I experience that with the teams I coach, right? They're just like, yeah, <laughs> you know, and then you, you get the results and it's like the greatest. I'm like, yeah, the formula is easy. <laughs> yeah. Is that's what, hard. that's what, that's why it was always fun to play in Europe because it was like fresh yeah. ears, fresh 100%. eyes, you know, uh, different, different perspectives, different angles. And they'd be like, mm -hmm. yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. And then you, you could, I mean, what I've done in Europe, like, you know, this is in history, like nobody will even, it's not even in history anymore. It's not even in magazines. It's like, it's gone. It like, is crazy made, that people don't even talk about that when they, when they're having, you know, some of these debates, but I have always thought the same thing, what you did with the bullets, you and Pete, like incredible. Yeah. That team was like, totally. you know, semi-pro last place, semi-pro no, team. Less than <laughs> semi-pro, but it, you know, yeah, it's every, everybody. I think everybody who's done uh, work in Europe has, has had to work really hard because, you yeah. know, they haven't had Absolutely. much much uh, talent to work with you know i mean it's 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 not easy to win ever but it's you know when you when you jump onto heat you know you've got guys that are you know mm -hmm. uh, accredited you know uh, it's like when you go to teams that are in in low despair you know mm -hmm. um and you the, know, Euro it's, the it's european scene, uh, the scene out there is really strong these days so yeah um major mm -hmm. major love to that it's funny that you brought up aftermath because today it's so crazy i just got my original uh harman aftermath jersey is so, this guy he's amazing michael rihanna major love to you dude he's trading me one of my heat jerseys for this og aftermath jersey which is crazy to me and i'm so grateful there's only nice. like one or two of these i don't think there was many of them out there yeah so the fact that i have this jersey coming back to me is like it's amazing so thank you so much michael and shout out to aftermath one time let's go yeah good question too i like that that was, that was a good question. Yeah, the I nice. mean the Discord is popping. There's there's a lot of action in here. We got Lil G in the building, and then I want to. I don't think Joe's gonna join us. I, he hasn't. Yeah, I think that. we're just gonna have to ask his ask his so question for we him. We got Joe Barrett fifty. He says, "Oh gee, this might take a little more time than you might have for the end of the show, but this is the story I wanted. At the end of the season, you won uh, around 2015. I'm pretty sure that was what it was, and then you took a hiatus." You went to Central America, if he can recall, and then ended up in Bali, and then seven years later returned. Can you shed light on that for us? I know why you returned and applaud you, but what is it? What is it that took you on a new journey outside the game? How did you end up living in Indonesia? So about that experience. Mm. Nice question, Joe. And I really appreciate you, Joe. I really admire you, and 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 I I was able to speak to you a little bit in World Cup and really connect to you and feel you, and and that's a. He's a solid brother, man. I really appreciate yeah. that guy. Man, big question, great question, and yeah, it is going to take up a lot of time. So I, I'm going to give you a little bit of the of the um, kind of the cliff notes of it, and then Joe, you and I can follow up deeper on it. But um, you know, I I I pretty much had a spiritual awakening, so to say. Uh, started started to come about 28, and didn't know how to what it was, and didn't know understand it, you know. And was actually afraid of it. And then, you know, it took me about two years to kind of um, get my feet under the ground on it. And then, um, you know, I just had realized that I was, I had built such a big character. I had built, you know, I had, I'd achieved what I dreamed of, which was becoming, you know, 
one of the best players in the world, if not the best at that time. And I challenged myself and I had won a lot. You know, I had traveled a lot. It was an amazing journey. And I really kind of broke myself and I said, well, this is, you're not this, you know, you're, you're more than this, you know? And so when, when you start to travel and you start to really like uh, let go of your identity in your, in your normal world, in your normal, you know, community, in your normal surroundings, you know, that's why I think travel is so important and so, so, um, so valuable because you can, first of all, you, you shed your layers of your identity and yourself and you see that other people in the world do things differently and that your way isn't the right way you know, necessarily like in America and California, you know, that's a matrix and you agree to do a certain thing a certain way. And then same thing is it's different in Arizona, but it's somewhat mm -hmm. similar. And then it's way different in other places in the world, you know, and I'm a, I'm a human being of the world, you know, and I'm, I'm not just Ollie Lang, who was a professional paintball player, you know, although that was my dream to become that. Uh, at a young age, I recognized that I was more. And so I wanted to let go of that identity and that personality and in, 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 and tactfully <laughs> deconstruct my ego so that I could break it myself instead of allow it to get broken by the, by the reality, right? So I disintegrated the personality while traveling and while being in Peru and then you know, also I had, you know, I started to feel the, so to say, the wings of spirit taking me. And, you know, all of a sudden I had money in my bank, like blessed, you know, from my business that I, that I had uh, invested in. I was traveling the world and I was like, okay, you know, like I've done the paintball thing. So let me continue riding the wings of this thing. And let me see where it can take me, you know? And I'm still riding the wings of this thing, so to say, um, you know, and it's taken me into many different uh, different places in the world. And I ended up living here in Bali um, because it was so different. That's why. And I liked it. I liked realizing that the way that I lived before is not necessarily not necessarily the best way. It's a way, you know, and that there's other ways. And I needed to open that and I needed to re. I needed to recreate myself to really understand who I really am, not this 17 year old identity that I created, you know, and then rode that for, um, so to say, you know, another 10, 15 years. Right. And, and it and rhymes with that. Ollie. Bali rhymes with Ollie. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, Bali, Ollie, dude. Bali, just Ollie. makes sense. Yeah. Bam. <laughs> yeah. And Bali's, Bali's the most magical place that I've found <laughs> on the planet. Um, it nurtures me in so many different ways, you know, so, it's a blessing to be here and it's a, it's a gift that I was able to learn, you know, the crafts that I learn here. And I do believe that I'm still in my mastery of the sport. So, you know, and as you guys are still playing the sport and you're still in the sport and you're still, you know, exercising your talent in the game and getting the recognition that you deserve. What I've learned, if you really want to be a go, it's beyond the sport. It's beyond the actual playing factor. Like if you say, Who's the goat of of basketball? You know, it's Michael Jordan, right? And why? I mean, yeah. Now you look at LeBron. You know, he's well, broken now we're all those conversation at like. <laughs> now we're now he's broken all those statistics. You know, and 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 LeBron, yeah, you could quantify him as the goat. But look what look what Magic Johnson or Magic Jordan has done for the sport, for the industry. Nike, you know, uh, movies, documentaries. You know, the ethos lives of Michael Jordan, right? And he hasn't played basketball at least for 20-something years. Of, I don't know, maybe 30 years. I don't know. Yeah, and I, I think it's remember. like how, how that person influences other people, right? And that is a byproduct of all the things you're talking about. To me, the Jordan-LeBron discussion is disgusting. It's just not even... <laughs> LeBron may have all of the, the stats. He's a stat stuffer. Cool. He's played much longer, so he can have a longevity trophy, but he's not a winner. You know, he gets those stats in moments that it usually doesn't matter. 
granted, I've seen him make some big game winners. That the, the like 2015, 16 finals when he was down three one, came back, beat the Warriors. That was like I was like, oh shit! If he does that a few more times, I'm gonna have to change my tune. But he didn't. You know, he's fallen flat everywhere else. He's gone. Jordan, the career is magical. You know, he played for like 13, 14 seasons. You know, that's six less than where LeBron's at now. And he had two, two, three peats, you know, almost back to back. He he won three championships in a row, takes a two-year hiatus, goes and plays pro baseball, comes back, wins three championships in a row. He's the finals MVP for all six of them. Like it's just, it's different. It's different, yeah. right? That's the winner. Yeah. That's the guy you're choosing to be on your team. And yes, LeBron has all of the stats. And, and the way I talked about LeBron publicly, they think that I think he sucks. Obviously, I don't. I think he's probably the third or fourth best player of all time, which is still a hell of an achievement. But, you know, the, the you know, is LeBron better than Jordan debate just drives me nuts. Absolutely yeah. drive me nuts. I don't even put him in front of Kobe. It's Jordan, Kobe, uh, Magic, then maybe LeBron, you know, like that's that's yeah, my I, my opinion on that. I, I hear you, but I think I think I think you echoed it right. It's it's like the magnitude of the character, right? And who you know, Jordan inspired LeBron. So you know, it's like LeBron yeah, sure. is a is 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 you know sure. an offspring of what Jordan has done. You know, sure. and you're right. And in fact, I hope you know that you guys and that the future generations can break all of the things that I've done, even though I've done so much of it. Like it would be hard, you know, but break it. I want you to, but you realize that I'm still in my evolution of my greatness, you know? And by the time you're breaking those, those or winning all those championships or getting all the statistics or whatever it is, now I've, you know, wrote the movie on how to play paintball or whatever it is, or wrote the, you know, the, the, the book or whatever it is. Right. So the point is, is that greatness continues, you know, absolutely. And it's, be, it's beyond the sport, you know? So, this is another version of it. Like, did I ever think I would get nominated as the, as an innovator of the year? No, you know, I didn't, you know, um, I didn't even think I'd ever own a, a brand in the industry, mm -hmm. you know? So, so these are the, these are the way that the, the levels of mastery unfold, you know, it's going to um, go ahead and put that up there for you, Oliver. <laughs> and the top the corner there. Corner. I don't, there I don't you know if go. You see it. Yeah. I'm, so Ollie, I, is that, so it looks like a Ram though. <laughs> It's a little more they're... like it's a goat ram. Family members, yeah. I know, it's, it's, a a gram. Goat really, it's a gram. It's a goat. It's a goat with, a nice with really hairdo. nice hair. Yeah, yeah like it's that a, flowing hair. It's, it's, it's you. It's a goat with a super nice hair, you know? Yeah, look at that. Flowing locks. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Let it loose. There it is. Let oh, it you, loose. he cut it. He cut it. It's a little, yeah, it's a I cut it a little bit, yeah. <laughs> cut it a little bit, yeah. So, Ollie, nice. what are you doing for Valentine's Day? more questions. What's going on today? I'm going to, I'm going to take my mom out for a nice, uh, oh, nice day. Mickey. Yeah, epic. Epic. Oh, I love she her. Just Tell her. To, she just Please. went to Singapore by herself. Uh, no cause she had to do a visa run cause she's been here for two months. So, so she, you need to God leave every her. two months. Yeah. So she's just, she's 80 years old. She just turned 80 and she just ripped it to Singapore by herself. <laughs> you know, just, I'm like, she's got the spirit, right. man. She does. I'm like, she's, she's got the spirit. It, she's well, glowing. I was like, Tell her I was like, I her. will not go tell to Singapore, her. but you can go. She's like, okay, I'm going. I'll tell her that you guys say hello. Yes, yes. please do. Please do, man. So I'm um, taking her out for a hot for a hot date. Uh, I don't know. We'll probably go for a walk, go have some dinner, go do something nice. Yeah. I love Amazing. that. Amazing. Yeah. She's the sweetest of all time. All right. We got a few more questions, and then we'll let you get get on with uh, with your Valentine Day with, with uh, Mama Lang. Lil G from The Bean. He says, Oliver, everyone is still in love with you because of your style and creativity that you showed on the field. I personally fell in love with you knowing that a paintball player owned one of the best sandwich shops in San Diego. My question to you is when you fly back to San Diego, what is the first place you have to stop to get a bite to eat? Great question. Shout Thank out to you the Rubicon. That. Rubicon Deli. Shout out to Rubicon. Yeah, Rubicon still crushes. They just they just made a burger place. I don't know if you've been to that yet, Marcelo, but they, oh. they have a burger burger place upstairs, and it's a super good burger. Oh like man, good for top, them. Top I'll, quality. I'll, I'll have to go down there. Uh, I don't have to rush to a place when I get to San Diego, but me and Evan, who's my business partner from from Rubicon, we always go to Hane Sushi together, oh, and we honey. go we go uh, omakashi, and literally. Uh, it's always really way too expensive and we just don't look at the bill but we just we just go big we we say we're, we're going deep we're going deep. 
<laughs> nice. It's not going big. It's going deep, you know? Nice. Yeah. Oh, man, that sounds delicious. All right, well, I think uh, – I think that's about it for the question. Oh, there's a few. There's Give like two more. more. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask Mark Paris's questions. question. Yeah, I'm going to ask Mark Paris's question because it's fitting to the uh, to the conversation we just had. But, Ollie, let's let you settle the debate. Who's the truest, greatest paintball player of all time? Well, I, I'm going to have to say Greenspan uh, because he's, he's, he's more credited than anybody, you know? He's won more than anybody. He's... He's taught more people how to play paintball than anybody. You know, he's lived the real paintball life uh, more than anybody. You know, he's traveled the world. Um, he's he's done it. You know, and and still doing clearly, it, and still and doing still it. Doing. And he's and he's definitely, um, you know, he's definitely broken barriers, rec recognizing that you can play paintball and be a top level elite player into your forties. You know, which I think is a pretty that's 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 big you know if you ask yeah, me because he just extended agreed. the lifespan of the sport um is he the best no he's definitely not the best <laughs> he's the greatest he's the greatest there is a difference there is a difference there there is a difference he he undoubtedly has has probably like the the most uh accolades in a career most wins he has he has all the stats to to back that up for sure and from a pure playing level I think over the last five years, he has gotten to a point of probably the best best player there, right? But again, for me, that conversation is just, it, it's, it goes back to, to me, I would make that more of like Jordan and Kobe. You have like the first big superstar. To me, that's always going to be you, and it's no diss to Ryan. He's like right there with you, right? But I'm just always going to put you in that category that is almost untouchable, you know, no matter what. You, you've just done so many different special things. Um, Ryan's he's definitely a better player now no offense but, you know he probably has played you know at a higher level than you did at that time just because i believe the sport evolves I, I think in the last 10 12 years i mean dude i look back at videos of us in 07 08 that world cup team that won the back-to-back -back world championships and i mean our fundamentals were were off you know like they they were they were off they were off they were definitely off we were we were big we were kind of bulky you know we were good still understood the game but the game has changed you have that like one prominent figure in each sport. I don't know that you can overtake that, you know? And again, yeah, it's no, right. it's no knock. I, I put Ryan, it's, it's one A and one B. Um, but, but the uh, thing is, is like, you know, Ryan fucking is a bitch to play with, you know, he's a pain <laughs> in the ass, you know, I, I'd rather play, I'd rather play. I'd rather have Tyler on my team <laughs> any day than Ryan in terms of fun and excitement and joy and peace. You know, same with you, Marcelo, you know, but Ryan seems to somehow win all the time, you know? So, you know, on that aspect, you know, it's like, I got to take Ryan also, you know? So it's a strange, it's a strange conundrum, you yeah, know? Yeah, of course. Um, well, we, we've all you know? had ample time if, to, if, to if be Ryan, around. If Ryan, if Ryan really wanted to be the GOAT, he needs, and he's doing it. I've watched him. He's changed a lot since he's had his daughter and now he's going to have another two. You know, he just needs to change his tone a little bit and he needs to get a little bit, you know, he needs to get a little bit more enjoyable to play with, you know, and then I think people go, fuck yeah, Ryan, for sure, you know? Well, I think there's something to that. that and like I was going to say, we've all spent enough time with Ryan to know that he's got a shark's mindset. You know, he's got like, he's he's devouring things around him. You know what I mean? Like he's uh, he's very smart, obviously and he's hungry he's he's extremely driven to to be good and do the things that are necessary to be great and win and that's what it takes so it's kind of a double-edged sword to have you know <laughs> that it, it's just what comes with it kind of and and you do need that you need that um that other side but it also that coupled with you gotta you know you gotta play well and do all those things and yeah but it, it's it's definitely necessary to have that kind of really hard nosed outlook on things like, you know, like he something, does something that I've learned about Ryan over the last few seasons that, cause he does a great job of, of acting like he doesn't really care about training and preparation and all of that. He really does a great job of, of pretending or, or putting off that vibe, but that he's one of the most professional players that I, that I've ever been around actually, you know, like he's, he's never missed a practice, never missed an event, never been, you know, Maybe it'll be a little late sometimes. It's kind of a dynasty thing. But 
everything has been done in a very professional manner. If someone even has a beer, you know, at, at practices, he addresses it. And I, I appreciate that. That's, that's how I feel. Right. And sometimes I don't, you know, voice those things on this team because I understand where I'm at on the totem pole where we're surrounded by legends, but I will say this. I have a ton of respect for the way he approaches the game. And I didn't used to think that he approached the game that way, you know, uh, cause he, no, he, he hides that's it a new well. thing. He, no, but that's a new it? thing. Ryan, okay. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan used to make fun of us for working out and training. See, you know? I think he still, cause he and, still, and, he still does that, but I think he like does it. And then he secretly goes and does 50 pushups <laughs> in the room. <laughs> you know? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. But the point is, is that I think you're right. I think he's got a high level of professionalism now. And I think he started yeah. to take it more seriously in the last couple, couple years because, you know, well, the, let's let's be honest you know like it it was his it's his time to shine you know like you know it's it, it was mm -hmm. he needed to bring dynasty to the next level and he did you know and you know i think in terms of professionally and making money uh generating you know income and and all these different aspects of the sport you know he needed mm -hmm. to turn it up a level and i think he a couple levels and i think he did you know and i think that mm -hmm. it's also showing why he's he's so good now still you know and, um, and why so and many that, do consider him as as the greatest. And he deserves it, you know, and uh, that's what I'm saying. So to answer his question, it's, it's Greenspan. But is he the most enjoyable and best? No, you know, for sure. <laughs> All right, we got I, I love I love the debate. When you listen to like Jordy, Jordan and, and Kobe, you know, you listen to these other athletes go, you know, talk about it. It's, it's always interesting because sports, you can never – there's really no right answer actually when you yeah. when it's that close it's like what do you value more you know as an individual as a fan of the game as an analyst like what do you place value on more like who can make the last shot or who has the most overall points you know or who's won the most championships well it's a team sport so like maybe the guy with four championships is better than the guy with six but it, it, it's all you know then you could say yeah but the guy with six made his team better you know it's that conversation is endless. It's timeless. It's why I love sports. It's why I love talking yeah. about it. You know, there really well, is no I, right answer. I, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of statistics and a lot of analytics to it. But man, you know, it's like, it's to me, it's like who makes the biggest imprint in your life and who helps you the most in your life, you know? To I me, that's, that. that's, the most, that's the most powerful for me, you know? And, um, and people do that in different places, you know? Um, definitely you guys have in, imprinted and inspired me more in my life than Greenspan has. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. And I mean, God, all of you've, Poor you've inspired so many of us, man. <laughs> so it's mutual brother. And Jay Lamb wants to know, Ollie, what is one of the best ways to motivate your team, no matter what the circumstances? So this kind of ties in well. Well, this is actually a great question because uh, motivation is just kind of all bullshit. You know, it's <laughs> just really, it's like, it's like it doesn't exist. Real motivation is all internal, right? So it's like showing up before, doing the practice, knowing that your that your skill is honed, knowing that you're prepared, right? Like that's the real motivation. It's like what do all you have the tattooed on your hand. What's tattooed on your hand there? That's it. Practice right there. You know. Yeah. So you got to be in the. You got to. It's like real motivation. It comes from a place where you already know that the work is done. Okay. You know, and all I got to do is turn it up a little bit. And I got to, I got to figure out, you know, like a, a, a team is like a big, it's like a big symphony, you know, Tyler's over here playing the cello, Marcelo's playing the, the wind flute, you know, and it's like, all I got to do is just sit there and conduct them a little bit. So they get it right onto the right tone and the right rhythm and the right pace and the right timing. Right. And then I can put my spin on it to, to get it really, to make it really magnificent. So if you want to, if you want to motivate your team, man, you know, I think the best way to motivate your team is by showing up, doing your best, living by example, which means if you want to try to get excellence in your in your results, you have to be training, you have to be working, you have to be putting in that practice. You know, again, I left paintball because I realized that if I wanted to be the best, I don't I want to put in the time and the energy of what it takes to be the best anymore. You know, that to me, that's a lot of work, you know. Like if I was to re show up and play paintball right now, like really seriously, like I know what it takes to be good and I know I could do it, but it would take every weekend. It would take long hours. 
you know, it would take, you know, a lot. So mm -hmm. if you want to motivate your team, you have to lead by example. That's always what I did. I was always the hardest working guy at the field. I was always doing drills. I never missed weekends. I was, I loved to play. So it wasn't a, yeah. it wasn't a hard thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and then it was easy for me to be like, Oh yeah. Like a DJ turn, turn up, those, up. Turn up those. <laughs> and then, and then again, speaking from the heart, it's easy to get you activated, right? Because, and if you've done your work, then you, all you have to do is look at me in the eyes or we just have to look at each other in the eyes in a quick glance and we're on the same frequency. And then we go out there and win the tournament, you know? Mm. So real motivation comes from you doing the work and for you posture, posturing um, the right uh, attitude by, by, by showing each other that, Hey, we, we've all been working hard at this and we mm. can, and when I say working hard, I don't, you know, we always have that little bit of that feud because there's, there's hard work, right? There's definitely hard work, but there's also a joy of it. You know, like, again, I never look, I never, sure. I've never worked a day in my life. You know, I've never, nothing's ever been hard to me because I've enjoyed it, you know, everything, mm -hmm. you know, and I challenge myself on a regular basis, physically, mentally, you know, and I do crazy ass things, you know, people don't even know about that. I, I train because I train, I, tr I try to push myself to those boundaries where I, I could break and then go beyond that and I become much more resilient, you know? So it's like a warrior. That's right. And we all, we are, we should all be warriors, you know, and that's the essence of the sport is really being a warrior, taking, taking on battle and then coming out into reality and being compassionate and being, you know, mm -hmm. nurturing and kind and loving. And this is what a father does. Right. Speaking of that credible, I might uh, lose my marriage if I don't put these kids to bed here in the next, like, five minutes or so <laughs> my, my kids got to go to sleep here in a second but all of okay, get dude i i just can't even begin to uh say how grateful we all are thank you for for stopping by the show and being a part of this amazing community dude and i know the paintball troll is going to have a field day with this rooster so be on the lookout for that <laughs> <laughs> it's coming <laughs> well i just hope it's the pro paintball troll instead of the paintball troll the pro yeah. paintball troll is the goat the paintball troll is, you know, everyone else. Yeah. So, <laughs> Ollie, um, please keep us in uh, in contact of what's going on with the tour. We want to we like share your stories, share all of your adventures, and make sure that we're uh, right there with you as you travel from Asia, USA, Canada, South America, UK, and Germany, all over the place. You're going to be a busy boy. Absolutely. Well, brother. I definitely don't want you to lose your your marriage, bro. <laughs> I gotta get these kids to bed. Baby. <laughs> Thank but. you, Oliver. Hell of a conversation as always. Pleasure having you on. Uh, let's do it again soon. Yes. Okay, I love you guys, and keep doing what you're doing. Keep being beautiful, magnificent role models to all the the future generations of the sport, and uh, and you guys rock, man. Dude, you rock, Thank Ollie. You. Let's go. Have a good night, or have a Peace. good day. Hey guys. <laughs> do I leave studio now? All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the orange Patreon link in the corner and support the show. We greatly appreciate it. We have tiers as low as $1.99 a month. That is nothing, guys, and it'll give you access to the Discord where you get access to the players chat and get to mingle with the entire PTG community. We have tons of different pros in there. Tyler and myself are very active, and it's an amazing way to support the show. We also have amazing other tiers if you want to be one of the best want to be a goat sign up for the goat tier it's the greatest way to support us and each month we do a private live stream show one-on-one -on -one kind of thing to where it's just the goats and tyler myself will bring in some special guests every now and then but you get to ask us questions in real time live on the air and you get lots of inside juicy news that we don't share uh on the show so as always we will see you guys very soon